Welcome into the Cam and Strick Podcast, episode number 184, presented by Hair Club, baby. Yeah, man. A lot of hockey coming up tonight, baby. No. Are you going to be able to stay it's awake? It's not tonight, because tomorrow we're releasing this, yeah, so it's well, Monday night right now. Yeah, I Am I going to stay awake for an 843 game? Uh, Fuck no. No? No, I'm not. And and I do bitch about that, and I know they got to do what they got to do. You're in the Western Conference, blah, 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 blah. But it's 830 game. It's 845. I got to get up at 430. That fucks me up a bit, yeah. so it sucks. You're and like I, a child. Like when people say, my son and daughter, it's being yeah. taken away from them. They can't watch the Stanley Cup playoffs yeah. because the games are too late. They're yeah. really talking about you, too. I know. Yeah. I'm the child of yeah, the group, and that's fine. I got, I got, <laughs> I got shit to do. Well, kind. Dude, drink some coffee. Motherfucker, I do. I drink so much goddamn coffee, I got to like settle down on it and drink Pedialyte. I had an agent, I won't even say who it is, who sent me a text yesterday. He said, hey, I'll be in town for games three and game four. We should hook up, whatever. And he said, do me a favor, have an espresso sent to my seat. Because the game doesn't start till 8.30. Oh, God, I know. I'm just <laughs> letting you know. Sometimes you got to get your mind right to stay up, man. And yeah. then that fucks you up the next day. So, mm. no, like, look, you got to get up and do a th- host a three-hour show in the morning, like, I'll have to get up and watch the rest of the game, but that sucks. I got to address some stuff with you first off. Oh, no. Okay, because you play, I well, I, I tell you all the time about, like, embarrassing the brand and what, what you're I doing, do. like, being cognizant, being aware when you're out in public. What I do? You, your golf game no, is fuck embarrassing. You fuck talk on here like you're a real golfer because no, you live on the course. No, I don't. And then I hear about these balls that you're using that are, like, so oh, Jesus, old and, like, the worst golf balls in that I people know. have ever seen. Man, I just, and it's like... Uh, then all of a sudden they look at us differently after they see you golf, dude. I know. I fucked I fucked a brand up. I did. Yeah, you did. I'm fucking embarrassed. And that par three. You think the par three is harder or easier? No, it's it so should much be easier. easier I, I should do something. And look, you know, I'm gonna say something. Mm-hmm. I love Timmy Peel. But he ain't he ain't no fucking good either. Okay. <laughs> With them tight ass baby blue fucking pants he had on. I love you, Peel. He's got golf outfits, by the way. Yeah, of course. He he looks like a golfer. And he took a selfie with you, you know? Yeah, and I even retweeted it because he does a lot of selfies. And I know he went to Tim McGraw the other day, and he said he's... uh, Friends with good. My dear buddy, good buddy, dear uh, Tim, uh, uh, Tim McGraw, dear, I'm here to see... Is that how he talks? Is is that his Canadian accent? Timmy, I love you. I love you. He ain't your buddy. (laughs) My buddy Tim McGraw's playing tonight. Just say Tim McGraw's playing tonight. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I'd we love Faith him. Hill anyway. And look, I know he's chirping me, and that's all good, because he's a better golfer than me, but he ain't that much better. And these we guys golf, suck. like, five days a week during yeah. during the uh, golf season, during the summer. These motherfuckers, when they're chasers out there in this big alumni tournament, and they're breaking down different packages that people could buy and raise money. Mm-hmm. And Panger and Peels, he bought every goddamn golf thing that they had set up. Oh, presented. really? So they had like a Nashville one, and Panger's like, let's go, Peelzy, and they bought it, and they bought it. So that's all they do is fucking golf. So don't chirp me when I suck. Just because I'm on a golf course doesn't mean I'm good. I don't talk about being good at golf. I don't, Andy. I don't do that. I don't do it. I chirp you because you're no you good either. You try to chirp me a little bit. Listen, here's what we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, because listen, listen, if I'm invited mm-hmm. to a f- – I entertained everybody that day. Yeah. I entertain. Maybe my golf game sucked. Okay. But what if you got invited there? What are you going to do? No, the same thing. You, oh, yeah? Like I'm, what? Well, entertain and have fun. Oh, okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. No, you're not. With you. You're going to suck, and you're going to suck again. There's no. no. No, I'm just saying. It's a scramble, dude. I can suck all I want. doesn't even matter. I hit. Wait. I putted some big old fucking. I heard you sunk one putt. I heard you I lifted it out about 16 times. I heard you, you heard su- everything, oh didn't you? Oh, my God. Well, people get. But I, I made them Damn. laugh. Are you going to make them Listen, laugh? Listen, that day I, I was down. At, I had to be down to the Blues at like 830 in the morning. The texts are coming in. I know. Right away. About God like damn it. 10 o'clock. People are calling. Ugh. It's so funny, though, because people see you there and automatically. Did you hear what Holly they, said to me? They think they got to start Did you hear what Holly said What did Holly say? I usually piss me off all the time. What did he say? Like, I look up to Holly, and mm-hmm. I love him. Yeah. But right when I get there, you know, I got to make your rounds. Did and he say, say hey. you look terrible or what? No, he goes, here's the Instagram king. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, the fucking Instagram king's here in front of everybody. I don't feel like you're on I go, Instagram what that the much, fuck does that? You? I go, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> he goes, the fucking Instagram king. You fucking, all you do is fucking put Instagram. Pu-. I go, I go, no, I don't. I go, it's just in Cabo. I go, oh, turn that, it off then. That'll be in your head. I go, turn it off then. I go, what? I go, he goes, you're the fuck. He goes, you got your girls today doing this. this. I go, what the fuck is he mm-hmm. talking about, mm-hmm. Andy? He yeah. rattled the well, fuck I think on the Instagram king. I think he's king? onto something. Fuck that. I think he's onto Even something. Even the people that he, we're, the group that we're around, there's people 
that that Instagram more than I do about their goddamn kids, mm -hmm. and it's the same shit over. What do I do no, different? I, I he told rattled you. me. He's on to something. He man. rattled me. I go, why delete me? Why you follow me? I then? was actually looking at his Instagram the other day because he he doesn't post enough. The Instagram king. Holy. He doesn't, he doesn't, I have no idea what's going on. He was in town, which is, I was flustered. I thought maybe he'd come down to the game and he didn't come down to the no, game. No, no, no. Yeah, but, but he just called me. I go, how good to see you. Well, he I called go, you out. About what? Well, the Instagram. Kid. What did I do? You do kind of post a lot of like nonsensical stuff, you know? It's for the fans. It's though. like, oh, well, it's not for Holly. That's, I always tell well, people no, why, that. I'm not catering to him. Yeah, right, right. And not to mention, it's Darcy probably watching it <laughs> and she's showing. <laughs> and he's like, your wife loves you too much or something. I go, I don't know. I, Maybe. I, I guess she does. But here's what we're he going to do this summer. Here's dude. what we're going to do. You and I are going to play golf together once a week. And we're going to get our game up, dude. We're going to do this. Wait. We're going to do so this. So I got to bring you out to my course once yes. a fucking week? 100%, dude. And I'm bringing Ty out for golf camp anyway. Which That's you gotta, fine. You got to take I'll him take there. You got to pick him up and I'll whatever. Take, well, you want me driving? I don't think no, so. No, 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 no. You got to walk over to the course yeah, when right, camp is over say, and take them yeah, back I to your house. I don't drive children around. And take them back to your house. I don't house. even drive my wife around. She drives me. Like, I can't. And then I'll come pick them up. Yeah, but I, okay. but we're going to play some golf, dude. We're going to play some golf. God. and We're, we're going to get our game back. Damn, going. these motherfuckers rattle me. Crusoe hooked me up there a night, though. I came to the rink, and he grabbed me down and took me to different places and stuff. Like, I just, it was nice. It was cool, mm -hmm. man. Kate and I had a lovely time at the game. We shook hands with everybody. That's what we do. Yeah, you're shaking hands with the, the COVID situation. I think Dr. Ah. Fauci, by the way, who, very close friend of mine. Um, <laughs> you would he, be friends with that fucking well, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> I think he declared uh, COVID over. Like it's No, it and then ended. he came back. And re no, no, no. And yeah, now the bird so flu is out there. Are you familiar with what's going on with yeah, the bird flu? Yeah, and that's why old boy from the NBA killed his chickens off and those psycho nutbag oh fuck God. weirdos. We talked about that last that fucking She was dressed like a referee. What a psycho weirdo. I thought she was a little. I thought they were a little you, you aggressive You probably with dated her. her at Arizona State. <laughs> you fuck. I thought they were a little aggressive They're with her, the way they dragged that. her around. They should have dragged her by her hair. Who gives a shit? You don't do that. How'd you get those tickets? It's all set up, Andy. It's all fucking. Dude, the security fuck. guard, he reacted so quickly, or she. I don't know if it was a he or a she, the security I guard. I think it was a dude. Okay, but they must have known who they were yeah, that we they were going to be doing no, something, no, no, right? No. So. Yeah, no shit, Andy. Yeah. When you have a nutbag with purple hair behind you uh -huh. waiting to fucking jump up and do something, like you have an eye on him. Yeah. Or her, or whatever that thing is. <laughs> Irrelevant. Are uh, you not sure? Well, it could be whatever. I mean, I don't. What pronoun do I'm going to use? It's all good. But the point is, they know what they're looking for, and she's mm -hmm. an idiot. But so, yeah, the bird flew, whatever. I don't, I just doesn't bo nothing bothers me, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I got my own shit to worry about. Like, I don't, I'm not going to wear a mask on a goddamn beach. I, I don't, the bird flu, okay, I, I cooked chicken yesterday. My stomach hurt this morning. Maybe I got the bird flu. Well, it's over now. Mm -hmm. My stomach feels fine. I just, it's just too many psych psychos that want attention. It's hard to deal with it. It is what it is. But, um. The bottom line is I'm not good at golf, and it's kind of a bitch story because everybody thinks that you're supposed to be good, and it's just it's just kind of embarrassing. Are you losing interest in golf now? I mean, well, we just, are you motivated to go out there and play? Uh, I feel like you're losing really. a little motivation. I think my I'm too jacked, and I can't swing my hips because my my upper body's so jacked. I'm fat jacked. If somebody right asked me the other day, they're like, "Wow, is, does Cam work out a lot?" I said, "No, it's genetics." I'm just a freak. They asked if your dad was an iron worker. My dad fucking slang waterproofing a fucking. I said hot tar. My dad took a 300-pound hose from a badass fucking flatbed of a big old Dodge yeah. and went to shit fucking Hillbillyville in the middle of Missouri and sprayed goddamn tar. What did his dad do? Owned the tar company, waterproofing company. Oh, he did? Shit kicker. Yeah, cow. Cake eater. He's, yeah, fucking right. Badass-looking motherfucker. Died in 91. You guys had it made over there. Let's he died in 91. Oh, did he? Yeah, I mean, he died of cancer. It was really bad. Oh, I didn't terrible. understand it. My dad was fucked for for a long time. But I wish I had a grandpa that saw me like succeed. You know, mm -hmm. he would have loved seeing it so much. Well, I wish I wish I could have had my dad and my grandpa. One of them. I didn't meet the other one. He died at a young uh, before I was born. Damn. But my papa and my daddy, you know, watched me fucking shit stomp motherfuckers in Enterprise. Man, that would have been really cool at the time. But uh, my dad got to see it. My mom got to see it. But my grandpa had never. Got to see me kind of grow into a man, mm. you know. Well, you're still not there yet, so. Oh, the shit. He would have loved it so much. Oh, man. Yeah, he would have loved it. I know. That. Of course he would. Hey, don't think he doesn't know. You know I know. Do you believe in that? Like, God damn right. Okay, so explain that. Like, if you're dead. God like, damn right. You feel like you see yeah, what's going listen. on? Like, come on, help me out with this. All right. Well, my mom and dad, you know, they've been through ups and downs with their health. They'd see me go through so much stuff. When they go, I'm going to, they're going to be in the back. They're going to be watching me, and I will believe that till the day I die. 
if I do something, I know my dad's going to watch. But I'm mm-hmm. not doing anything crazy anymore where I need to get so hyped up to where I need to pray to my parents. I always prayed before I, before the games, man. I always did. Hold on. I you did. pray a lot? I prayed before the games. I had a, a like, little well, ritual. Can you give us, like, an example of what you would say? Yeah. Kay. I would be in, in uh, National Anthem. I'd be on the bench or on the ice, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'd pray, and I'd say, God, uh, what the fuck did I say? God, help me with something of something. Mm-hmm. I love my mom and dad. Mm-hmm. I love my family. I love my kitty cat. Yeah. And then I tie it together with something about love and God or something. Yeah, no, and I'm out of fucking... Great. No. Yeah, yeah, and then, no, 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 and, and pump me up, and I'm like, "What's up?" Yeah. And I'm gonna go fight. Sometimes a I talk to myself and ask for like the higher being to protect my situation or whatever, or help me out in a certain situation. I, I think say, I love my, that. I yeah. love it, I love who I love, and then uh, I'd feel good about it. It mm-hmm. probably did nothing, but it made no, me I think feel it good. May have done something. All it makes it doesn't matter if it's real or not. If you believe it, it's all good. Mm-hmm. So I believe that they were always there, and they were somehow. But I don't know, man. It, I'm not a religious guy, but I do believe in something. Mm-hmm. Something, something's something been knocking on my fucking door like, hey, Cam, don't do that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then the devil on the other side is like, Cam, go do that. And I'm like, no. The other guy said no. And then I balanced that. And then I usually I had another up. source um, tell me that uh, what they think it'd be great if you had a kid. Like, it'd be the best thing for you. Listen, I blew a lot of loads in Kate over a cowboy trip. If she's not pregnant, then I'm fucking pathetic. And I don't know what to do about that. I'm not spending 40 grand to get have a child that I have to create because I'm spending money to create me, which is probably Satan anyway. So if it happens, it happens. But I'm not going to, like, spend 40 grand to create. On a little boat? Like, where you guys were with all these uh, other people on the because boat? Because I told all y'all this. Whenever you go on a town, okay. Yeah, but with all these people around you, Dude, you did we had a penthouse suite. I could, I just, I Houdini. Did you have your own separate, like, condo? Well, goddamn right. Or were right. you guys all in one house together? We're in a huge house, but I have my own separate room, my own bathroom, my own everything. Like, it's separate side of the goddamn thing. You can't hear anything. Could you share a bathroom with other people in the Fuck, house? Could, could you no. have done that? No, I don't do that, Amy. <laughs> God, no. Share a bathroom with my fucking stomach after oh, partying shit. all fucking night? No, I need to lock myself in my room, have my coffee. How does Kate they, handle that? Man? That's just she some... deals. She's a fucking trooper, man. She's a trooper. She really is. Yeah. She's seen a lot with me. Mm. So I don't go to the bathroom in front of people. I don't like to be around people. Mm-hmm. I like to Houdini. If I don't feel good, I'm out. Boom. You're out. See ya. You won't even, I won't even say, say goodbye. I won't even say you know, fucking bye. I, I never was that guy, you know? But now I, I'm at the point, I, I will leave. I'll just take, I, I don't want to say goodbye. My wife no takes too anyway, long Andy. to get away from places anyway and wants to talk to everybody. No, no, no. Put the worst part down. is whenever you go somewhere, I like to go straight to the, I've told you this before, go straight to the, I got to get my cocktail, whatever. And huh. then you find out kind of where you want to go. Andy. She'll talk from the first step no. we get in nope. the place. And we're stuck in that spot. For like 20, 30 minutes. How are the kids? Oh, oh my God. God. Okay. Should I tell like, the priest? Uh, no, 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 no. Give me a goddamn cocktail. I will beeline it to the bar. Move people <laughs> Stop out of the way. Stop talking. Can we just, just wait a minute? Say we'll be right back. Where are the booze at? I, I just need to get away from people. I crush know. a couple of beer and then I'll chill and be like, what's up, everybody? Can I ask you something? A very sensitive topic. What? Okay. So I threw this out there yesterday. <laughs> like, you know, sources are saying that Joel Quimble you know, would like to get back behind the bench. He wants to coach again in the National Hockey League. I checked in with the league. He needs to be reinstated by the commissioner, Gary Bettman. I don't think there's any surprise to hear that. Of course. That he would need to be reinstated. From what I understand, there will be some teams, uh, quality sources, indicating that there will be some teams who will want to reach out about his situation and have interest in bringing him on board. I mean, he obviously is a great coach. Um the, the Red Wings, from what I understand, could be one of those. Yeah, this fired a coach. And uh, and you look at the way the team is built. He's from Windsor. You know, maybe there's, oh, yeah. there's something there. The reaction, I don't want to say it surprised me, but I didn't expect it to be nearly as, as one-sided. I mean, he is um, probably has more repairing to do than maybe I even realized. And I just wonder if... He or the Blackhawks or the league, like, if he truly didn't know as much as what I'm being told that he says he was not aware of. Like, from what I understand, Joel Quinville, Stan Bowman, these guys, they claim they didn't know any of what came out in the report that was made through the investigation. Like, that that was the first time they had ever heard of it. So when it was first brought to their attention – None of the other stuff that we saw or read in the report 
was brought up in their initial meetings, okay? So it wasn't like they were told all of that, and then they said, okay, who cares, whatever, I'm going to go coach and whatever, leave this guy, you know, this, this, this video coach, he can work yeah. right next to me, and he can come on the plane with me, yeah. and we can hang out, and I'm going to write recommendation letters and all that. If you know Joe Quenville, I would be shocked that he would want somebody like that around if he knew all that information, I okay? Agree. And I think people who know him would say the same thing, and those who know the situation claim that he just didn't really know a lot of what's going on. And now I wonder, like, is he ever going to be able to come back and coach? Is, 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 is the crowd, the anti-Joel Quinville crowd, is it too loud for him to ever come back? I mean, just in terms of the corner th that he's being put in and the picture that's being painted, like, how is he going to repair this reputation? Like, what does he need to do, Cam, to be able to come back and coach he in the NHL? To, he needs to be hired and win a couple games and people forget about it. Now, I, again, if he knew about it, then we got a problem. Well, with people he, are saying, like, he covered up a sexual I assault. Know. And, and, like, I get that. Is yeah. that that's... I don't know how accurate that is, and I don't, I don't know. know if he's in position to be able to explain to people, like, that's not the case. But at the end of the day, he's got to come out eventually. He's got to address it. He's got to address he it does. and explain what exactly because, he knew. Because, listen, huh, how do I put this? Like, all the coaches know everything about all the other coaches, too, man. Like, you just know. You're around the guys eight hours a day in a room looking at video. You're talking about your, mm -hmm. your personal life. You're doing this. If you're a coach and you have a video coach that's part of your your meeting every fuck day, and you you know who he's hanging out with, mm -hmm. like you do. Now, is that enough to be like, what do you? Like, I'm sure they're like, hey, stop, stop hanging out with a fucking player, you weirdo. Like, stop doing that. Like, you don't you don't do that. One of the black aces. Yeah, like you're you're with a black ace. You know, it could be a white ace, could mm -hmm. be a purple ace, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But they call it the black ace. It's yeah. all good. But if you're like, what are you hanging out with a with a kid for? Like, you got to put your foot down on that. Like, you're the fucking video coach. Like, get in here, press goddamn play, press rewind, and show us some goddamn clips. And don't hang out with the players, you weirdo fuck. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. If you hang out with the players, we're going to fucking do something about it. So if they knew that, just that little thing, they should have put their foot down. But if you know that you're really partying with a guy and staying up and doing weird shit all night, and, like, you're putting him in a weird spot, like, you got to put your foot down on that. Like, how do you not know that? I don't know, man. I don't know. That's the weird part. But if I'm a if I'm a team, I'm going to give him a second chance no matter what. Like, I would. Well, I feel like if a like team is even would. showing any type of, any level of interest in yeah. hiring him, yeah. that they feel like they have whatever information that they know or what they have is that would point towards maybe um, him not knowing as much as people, you know, believe that yeah, he did. Even if you knew they were hanging out together, you got to put your foot down, mm -hmm. dude. We've talked about this yeah, a million times. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not looking to rehash that whole thing, but I'm I just know, reading some of these comments. I'll hire him. Though. And cool. the way they're, I, I just, from people on the inside, I'm talking about people at the highest level with the Blackhawks, who I have talked to. And they tell me flat out, Joel Quinville did not know a lot of what people believe that he knew. Okay. And I've he's just got to come out and he's going to have to come out it, and man. eventually address that. And um, it, this is not a situation that the league can just say, you know what, okay, we've heard, we like what we've heard, and we're going to have him coach yeah, and reinstate know. him and not have him come out and truly, no, truly address it. And do a real interview with real questions. Thank you, Andy. From a real reporter, not some fluff piece. Like, um, hi, how are, how was Not that? somebody no. with an agenda. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Just like a real conversation. Let him pick and choose who he wants to talk to, maybe. But have a real conversation. I agree and for with people that. out there and say, well, he shouldn't be able to pick and choose. Like, whatever. Celebrities that have scandals and whatever, they, they, they pick and choose to go on Shit. Good Morning America or Oprah or whoever they go on. Yeah, they, they go on the pussy. You think that they're just told by, oh, you have to go talk to Oprah. You have to go to Good Morning America. No, they go there. Good they morning. know they're going to have to face the music. And they yeah, they're going to get, that Good Morning America is going to get you. No, they're not. Mm. They're a bunch of fluffy asses. Well, whatever. Anyway. You know what I'm saying. Today's yeah. show, whatever. Well, fuck. How about going Tucker? Huh. <laughs> How about going fucking somebody hardcore that will get you? Like, I don't know. They pick and choose, and I get that. But Joel Quinville needs to sit down and have a hardcore interview. And same thing with Stan Bowman, and, whoever. And be like, right? I didn't fucking know. Here's what I should have done. Mm -hmm. I should have known when they were kind of hanging out. I should have put my foot, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. put your foot down on it. But, like, do you think Joel Quinville knew that they were, he was beating, you know, the, the video coach was Pepe Le Pew and touchy-feely and shit? Like, if you knew that, you'd put, who cares if they're going to, we said this before, like, they were so good. Like, if you fire a video coach, no one gives a fucking fuck about it. 
Mm-hmm. Nobody right. would care. Or but get if you know Joe Quenville either, like he'd get rid of that guy in a heartbeat. Seconds, I would. Right? I would want to believe. I'd so want to believe that. I agree with you, Andy, on that. Like if if Joe Quenville, if you know Joel, and if he knew this guy was doing what he apparently did, like well, he'd have that guy out of there get so the fucking fuck fast. Out of here, you so little nerd anyway, boy. No, I don't want to get too you. into all that. But all I'm yeah. saying is, you know, there is legit interest from him to return, and. Um, I think there's also going to be some legit interest, or there already is, from teams who are, you know, exploring the idea of bringing him on board. You. And you just wonder, like Michael Vick, you know, it's like, you know, what what he did with the dogs. And all. I remember when he was like wanting to come back to the NFL, and I remember people like, you know, picketing and protesting outside the Philadelphia yeah. Eagles complex and what they had to deal with, and some of the other people, Deshaun Watson. You know, yeah, Mike Tyson like is being like worshipped nowadays. I mean, he did go to prison for for rape. Yes, and he stuff did. Like that. And you he know, did like, some stupid shit. So. I don't and know. I like Mike Tyson, dude. I don't know. I just feel like everyone pretends that they know everything. Of course they do. And especially when it's something negative, where they a, can feel the hierarchy. Yeah. Is like, there anything Joel can say to like come out and like that would change people's opinions or, or view? Yeah, you say the right. Th- well, you just be honest mm-hmm. and you go, you go perform, mm-hmm. and then all these people will kind of forget about it. And sometimes you need it's people to forget yeah. and like rehash yourself. He's doubled down on it several times to say I didn't know. Well, they didn't fucking you know? know. How can you know and not do something about it, though? Like, it doesn't make any sense to keep that little dink right. ball, little dinky-ass fucking video coach. Like, I'm a video... Ugh. So, like, what are, you, what are you doing? You're hanging out with the fucking black ace. So get the fuck out of here. Do you think he should get another chance? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, the Stanley Cup playoffs are here. And anything... Like, listen, I'm... Mike Rupp's coming on this edition of the <laughs> Camastric Podcast. Love Great him. conversation. Such a good dude. But we get into it a little bit at the end in terms of some of these playoff series. I, I just, I, I'm looking at it on paper. And Cam, you know this, man. We always see upsets. Yeah. Always. And every year we're going to see them. And this year I'm looking at these series on paper. I'm like, well, where are the upsets going to come from? Uh, like, who's beating who? Well, the Kings could probably beat Because we all know if St. Louis beats Minnesota, even though St. Louis is a lower seed, that's not an upset. I mean, Nashville's going to go toe-to-toe. You think? Yeah. I think Nashville's going to be terrible like, down the stretch, man. Well, the way they lost to Arizona. Oh how could my! You not who hasn't be, lost to Arizona? I know. Stretch? But how could you not beat Arizona to avoid playing Colorado? Man, I I know, homeboy. I get that. But sometimes you play a team and you're Colorado and you just got everything going. And you play a Nashville and their goalie could get hot, and they're just in your face and they yeah. hurt you. So they, they might don't have sorrows though, man. I don't. know. I know, but they might. They might do enough to slow you down. Maybe. To a point where maybe you win, but in the second round, you're so beat up. Right. That's what I hope for. Just go play physical. Mm-hmm. Go entertain us, all you. Yeah. Enter- get me. Hey, listen, no matter how emotional, how different you think the game changes and whatever, I will say, Stanley Cup playoff hockey, it never disappoints. No, man. Ever. It's in your face, Ever. baby. It's, it's mean. Blood. Motion. Like, fuck you attitude. I fucking hate you. This is a, this is so much to our organization where I'll do anything to slow you down. That's the kind of attitude. And Toronto, you know, they think you know they got Justin Bieber. They do this Mickey Mouse outfits. Da, 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 da. Like, are they gonna fucking do something against Tampa? Is Tampa gonna shit fuck them again and put them in a place where they can't get past the first round? <laughs> What happens in Toronto if they lose in the first <sighs> round? I hear some people crazy. be like, well, it depends how they no, lose. I'm no, like, I don't no, think so, no. man. They got to win against Eventually, Tampa, you gotta, you're gotta, you going to have to, like, make some changes there. What are you going to do, man? No, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna protest up there, mm-hmm. dude, and rightfully so. And but again, they're I, sitting like Jason Spezza, and obviously the game, I think they start tonight, right? So, yeah, you know, when this comes baby. out, you know, game one's already going to be played. Yeah. But they're sitting like Jason Spezza. They're playing Kyle Clifford. Like, they're already trying to, like, it's already in their head. Dude was just like, Ugh, I'm crunching you the know, numbers. I, I, li- I like Clifford. You know, I don't know if that's gonna like all gonna of a sudden anything. like change things. You know, I mean, you just got to put your 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 best foot forward and your best lineup that you think that can I know that you can win with. You just got to what, what when when do you play your best at? Is it Clifford in the lineup? Is he not? Like you go play your best and mm-hmm. see if they have to adjust to you. You guys have more points than them. Then go fucking play. What do you think of um like nowadays like these guys that played a long time in the NHL who announced their retirement. And the other team stays on the ice, and they shake their hand that's and do cool. all that. You like that, yeah. Yeah, goddamn right. Yeah. Like, yes. Dustin Brown, man. He had the, a hell of a career. Yeah, dude. we, we kind of grew up playing against each other and shit like that. Got mm-hmm. drafted in the O together. Same, same agent. agent. Drafted in the NHL. Same sh- agent. Like, he's awesome. He's a nice guy. A little nerdy. A little nerdy. Don't get me wrong. Is he? 
Yeah, but you I like him. D'Lo. You don't see too many guys who are captain all of a sudden have the C taken away. Let's get his and ass then, on. And then stay with the team. Let's get Brownie on. Look at him on. Yeah, 100%. Fuck it. He, man, I like watching Brownie play. He'll mm-hmm. put you on your... Even he's like yeah, he was a big time He'll hitter, put you man. on your goddamn yeah, ass. Big part of USA Hockey. I used to watch him skate, Andy, when I was young. Mm-hmm. And Scotty Norton, who I love, by the way. Because he could skate, man. He'd be like, watch him skate. Really? I'm like, I thought I was a good skater, and you watched Brownie. You're like, mm-hmm. fuck, that, there's yeah. no wonder he's and better. And he could score. Score, he was awesome. He and David Backus, for a time there, were like the top two like American-born power forwards for... Fucking three, four hundred hits a year. Yeah. Monster hits, oh, not yeah. pussy Although hits. Although they kind of handed those out in L.A., I will say that. Like, teams well, go to L.A., like, oh, anybody, get, you get, like, nine hits. Piss me off sometimes. You know that? I got two hits, and the other guy on the team's got <laughs> ten. I know. I got all fucking murdering guys. <laughs> man, That's that got to be the off. hardest thing, man. I, I even <sighs> hesitate, like, when I say how many hits, like, because, like, Minnesota. Minnesota. They are uh, a uh, Minnesota, you betcha. They, they, you betcha, dear. They have, like, uh, they're considered, like, a heavy team, a physical team. They are. And then, you, like, you look at the hits, and I think they're, like, 18th in the NHL no, or something. No, but they got Foligno. You know they got oh, I know. Away. No, they they're heavy. Hit you, dude. Eric Sinek will hit you, too. He'll hit you. You know? Goddamn right he will. He's big, too. Yeah. I like that team, man. Mm. I know they're playing our blues, our baby blues, but I like that Minnesota team. I do. I like them there, and uh, they they tear up there, there, and... Uh, so listen, you got a bunch of like guys that have been around for a long time, legendary yeah. names, Cam, who who we may never see again. You think Chara plays again? For some reason, I don't feel like he's retiring. Yeah. I, I just don't. I don't feel know. It. He scored a goal in the last shift. I I, I, I put him in a blue note. Gives a shit. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Put him in here. Really? He ain't gonna come here. Yeah, I would. What? Why? For a six defense can lefty? Still, can he still play? Uh, it seems like he can. I don't know. You talk to some scouts, they say he just can't play. Oh, well, anymore. maybe not. Maybe he could just penalty kill. Okay, if he can't play, then no. But if yeah. he could still get around a little bit and push guys out of the way. Remember he did Carolina. Uh-huh. He's like standing, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of Keith here. Yando, little boys. Keith Yando. I don't know if I'd put him in this cat. He was a good, good player. I, I wouldn't put him in the same category. I don't trust anybody that doesn't get hurt. Especially You don't? Nope. nope. He's the all-time. Uh, I don't trust it. Games played later. Although Kessel will pass him probably. Yeah, him too. You don't trust Kessel either. I don't know. How can you not get hurt, dude? I just don't fucking. Well, get no, it. it's not a matter of I, not Andy, getting hurt. I know hurt. what the fuck Sometimes it is. Sometimes you play Andy, through injury. Andy, I know what the fuck it is. Don't <laughs> play me like a fiddle. You're a goddamn defenseman. You don't get fucking hurt. Get on with yourself. You can play every game, every fucking game. Like that doesn't make sense to me. I will say this. Go get hurt. Hey, I've had a lot of like, I've asked this to a number of players, and they all Come say on. the same thing. Say what I said? Yeah. No shit. Funny how that works. And he played on a lot of teams that didn't make the playoffs, yeah, too. He's, he's, he, he just creeped around, and, oh, I'm going to avoid this hit. Power play. Power play. Boop-a-dee. Had a great Ba-ba-ba-da. career, though. Oh, I, I, I really like Keith Yandel, man, especially when he came up in, in Phoenix. Yeah. Back yeah. then, it was Phoenix. Yeah. Look, of all the things, I'm like, if he was a warrior and he didn't get hurt, I'd be like, fuck yeah, but, eh. What about Carey Price? I like him, man. You got to get him on. Get Could him be on. done, dude. He's like he's indicating good. that he might be done. He's got a ton of money. He's all good. You think that changes your your motivation to come money? back and play? Money? You're fucking A. Goddamn fuck Even right. if you've never won a cup. And you're a superstar player, Hall of yeah, Fame. Yeah, but he's not getting rocked every day. Like, I get why, like, um, some, uh, you know, Getsy's wife's like, motherfucker, we got 50 in the bank, 70 in the bank, whatever it is. Like, I don't need you getting hit. I, I want you to hang out with the kids and, and just be around them. Mm-hmm. You see all these ex guys, man. They're just around their kids every fuck day. Like, that's. Well, listen, I talked to. I don't know. Cam, I, I don't know how you get to a certain age as a professional athlete and you've made a ton of money. You stick around that long. You, you, you Typically, you're pretty good, right? You got a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, don't you age out? Like, is it still fun to go, like, mm. hang out with, like, it is 23 year olds on the plane and, yeah. like, going out with. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah it I, I get it. But some people have said, hey, listen. At some point, you just kind of age I, out, and it's not that hey, much fun. Like, if you're Tom Brady right now, like, I know you're Tom Brady. He's a psycho, dude. He Tom is. Brady's a psycho. He, But for Chara, like, is he still, like, I remember Keith Kachuk telling me that. At the, he's I know. Like, you just kind of don't have anything in, in common with no. you. And we say, wait, 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 wait. Who the fuck's he kidding? Well, here's the deal. Okay. I'm saying. We but, love you, Walt, but, he's but got kids, you were hanging out with all of us every goddamn yeah, night. Yeah, but you're missing out with all the kids, your your kid stuff and whatever, and like you're going on the road hanging out with like 23, 24-year-olds. And he had a good time doing it. I but know. but you're right, Andy. You want to see your kids, man. You got enough. You've done it all. Now, Walt wanted to win a cup, too, but it, he wasn't going to do it with the teams he was on at the end of his year, but his career. But, but yeah, no, I um, sometimes you just got to put your foot down back. No, I'm going to enjoy my life. Because playing hockey, it's not like you're really worried about getting hurt, but some guys are, man, because you can. 
But it's more like I'm gone. It's all about me, 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 me. It's not about my kids. It's not mm-hmm. about my wife. It's not about anything else in life. It's about me. And sometimes you need to like set that aside and be like, I got everything I need. Yeah. Let me take care of the kids. It's got to be about somebody else. Yeah, that's why you taught. need. That's why you need a kid. I've been blowing loads in cave. <laughs> I don't know what we do. Well, am I supposed to do something else? Well, I don't know. Is there a pill I can well, take? Yeah. I've taken a lot down you, in you doing it the, the right pharmacia way? in fucking Cabo. What about Mark Shifley? What do you think of that guy? I don't know. Peelzy don't like him. <laughs> Peelzy had some comments. What Peelzy say? I don't, I don't like that dare no guy. Dare or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Peelzy, we love you so much. Uh, I don't know. He's all right. I mean, like, he they came, suck. what did he come out and say? I'd love to be in Winnipeg, but I also have to see where this is all going, <laughs> what direction the team is going in. I guess we'll see. In I'd love summer. to be in Winnipeg if it was like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> he obviously wants to know who the head coach is. Yeah. Well, no shit. But I, look, man. I think Paul Maurice, though, moved on in I'll part. I'll take that Shifley kid. How much he making? Seven. Oh, he's making good money. Seven? Whatever. I don't have an exact salary. Well, I'm in looking front at of the us. Blues thing. Yeah. You can't have a guy making. You know, more than seven. Winnipeg, though, man, they gotta, they They're gotta, goofy. they gotta like retool it. They're goofy. It's just not working. They're goofy. You can't throw out the same cast of characters. They got some good dudes. Remember, though. Hey, the Blues for years used to say like the uh, the definition of insanity was like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting. I don't different believe results. the Blues said that initially. I think that no, was no, no, no. They didn't say that. The people would say that about the Blues, you know, because they just kind of threw out the same group year after year yeah, after okay. year, and they just couldn't get past. You know the same same roadblocks, man. They could they they you, you just until you do. I know, but you got to make some changes. And yeah. They moved Oshie. They brought in Troy Brower and changed you know, some things. Brought in Bo Meester and whatever. And they yeah. changed some things. No, I get you, man. You're not. You can't. Uh, you can't uh, climb the mountain to. Wait, wait, it's, what's what? the analogy? No, you can't do. No, here's the point. The point is, you ain't good, and you can't beat a, another team until you goddamn do. Just like Minnesota and the Blues right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Blues own them. The Blues. Well, they own them until they don't own them. Like the blue, the Chicago Blackhawks on the Blues until they didn't, Colorado did until they didn't. What, whatever the case, the Blues finally came came around and fucking said, "Fuck all you, we're gonna own all you guys," and they won. So it's like, you could you could take that, but on the other hand, man, it, it happens until it doesn't happen. And sometimes, I don't know. Hey, like Minnesota ain't no joke. Before we get to Mike Rupp, Rupper, the Rupp dog. This whole Vegas situation, man. You know what? You knew it was gonna come at some point. And I could just see, like, the whole organization, like, they were just here. I, this whole organization is just, they have this certain type of, like, cockiness that they carry themselves with, you know? Yeah. And to see them have to eat some, like, what is it called? Like, you have to eat uh, a little humble pie or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For the first time, you know, it, it, and and I just feel like they always have drama. There's just always drama surrounding Vegas. There is. You know, whether it's, um, you know, the trade deadline, the no trade clause, the salary cap, Mark Andre Fleury, Robin Leonard. It's too much. Listen, I I I like Robin Leonard, but you just I think everyone kind of questioned at the time. Like, is this is this the right decision to be made? It's stable. Now all of a sudden Vegas is looking for a goaltender heading into this offseason. How many years left? And, is and then Mark Andre Fleury could be a guy that they go after. <laughs> I know. You know what Mark I'm saying? Mark Andre Fleury could be a big reason why the Blues lose. Like you can never underestimate chemistry. I think we've said that on here several yeah. times, man. You just you just can't. And they moved on. Like even a guy like Nick Holden, from what I understand, was an important piece to the locker room. In addition to Reaver, Alex Petrangelo comes in, and Jack Eichel comes in. Like I just don't feel like I don't know, man. It's been like look at Petro and Eichel walking out locker room. They do stuff on the ice, but mm-hmm. they're not changing that locker room. Man. Like Petro's not a locker room guy. Mm-hmm. He's a go play. 27 oh minutes yeah. kind of guy and oh go yeah. do your shit. He'll but he's not going to come in like, here's the deal. Like, he's not doing that. <laughs> Where are we going tonight, boys? Where are we going tonight, boys? It's on me. No, no, it's not. <laughs> um, and I call, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think of him. Sometimes your superstars could walk in a locker room and be downers. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm telling you. Not so, saying it is, but I'm saying it could be. Listen, Vegas, this isn't the uh, NBA. Like, you just try to create these, like, power teams. NBA. <laughs> Like, we're going to get the, this superstar and that superstar, and we're just going to, you know, and all of a sudden now it's just like, okay. But you ha- you don't have, like, a Yoink. team. <laughs> Mango, baby. Mango. All right, we get into a number of different playoff stuff, too, uh, in this edition with Mike Rupp, so people can stick around for the interview. Or towards the end, I should say. And you can get into, you know, we get into uh, you know, Tampa Bay and Toronto and some of this other stuff, too. So. Tampa ain't fucking around, dude. 
Hey, I've said it several times, man. I'll say it again. Florida is not coming out of the East. People don't. You got money on that, me. homie? Oh yeah. People don't want to believe me about it. I, they don't have the goaltending or the defense. Like two things you have to have. It's no option. Oh, boy's coming back though, right? Who's that? On uh, Florida, we got the knee problem. Oh Ed, yeah, Ed Vlad, yeah. He'll he'll, he'll be certainly good. improve that. I hope Florida does. Oh, something. they'll be good. They'll get out of the first round. They'll score a bunch of goals. They're fun How to watch. How about Carolina? What do you I, think of them? I don't know. They've got goaltending issues. I know. It depends when Anderson comes back. But fuck, they don't lose games though. No, they, they don't. I know. But they can't go. And then you look at Pittsburgh. They're not going far with it. With then you uh, look at the Rangers. Ranta. They've got that Russian goaltender. From what I understand, like he's he yeah. might be the guy. What yeah. about the Rangers? I like the Rangers. They're young. They'll beat fast. Pittsburgh. I don't know. I just don't know. The Rangers maybe. will beat Pittsburgh in the you first round. You think so? I do. What are the odds on that? Because I'll throw money down can on I, it. Can I throw this out I'll there? throw money as, down As a that. crazy upset, it would not surprise me if the Rangers win two rounds. It won't, be, it won't surprise me if the Pittsburgh beats the Rangers. It, oh, it wouldn't surprise me. At all. It would not no. surprise me Man, at I all. I don't know. Something to see. What about Boston? No. They don't have it? I, I don't think they do. Now, they could because of, um, you know, the situation, you know, that they're that they're dealing with right now with – um, Carolina's goaltending. Like maybe they can get past Carolina. If Carolina doesn't get goaltending, we all know they have no chance. But I, I don't. I just can't see Carolina losing in the first round. But I can see Boston losing in the. You don't first think round. Washington's going to put up a fight anywhere? They might put up a fight, but they're not. Just, you're, you're either good enough or you're not. How's Ovi? I think he's okay, right? Oh yeah. He didn't get tripped up, by the way. It's no, like, he'll it. play. They, like the goalie didn't mean to trip him. He's just gonna, Ovi's like. Oh, he's a fucking freak. He's a machine freak, this guy. This well, he was in New York. Did you see him in New York goals. the other day? Like, I love how people are like, can he catch Gretzky? <laughs> can he? Of course. When are we going to change the narrative to like when he I catches hope he does. Gretzky? I truly hope Dude, he fucking, I love that guy. We should never even question whether or not he's going to catch Gretzky until he shows that he's slowing down. Right, like, this dude's still scoring 50, 50 goals. 50 fuck goals. He doesn't get hurt. He's going to, he'll, he'll end up having like 35 to 50 more goals than Gretzky when it's all said and done. Wow. Yeah. All right. I hope so. Like t- 35 okay. to whatever. Right. I ain't going to lie to you. He's going to pass his ass. I ain't going to lie to you. There's some dudes that, like, you know, oh, yeah. take over different. Uh, they just, they find a way. Well, and my point is. I know what you're saying. You, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. There's a couple dudes that are fucking nerdy and boring, and they break records, and mm-hmm. you're like, God damn you. Oh, yeah. I don't want you to break Gordy's record because no, no, you're not cool no. enough to break. Ovi's cool enough to do you whatever the, the only fuck thing he that wants. can stop him. Is if all of a sudden like something happens with this whole Russia Ukrainian situation where the Ovi's le- planning where on the no. league is like Russians are no longer allowed to play in the How NHL. dare you, Ovi? I can't believe you're talking to Putin about taking over Crimea again. You Wait, know what? what? He's like, or, no, or I, uh, obviously uh, an injury, but like this dude yeah. doesn't really seem to like he's Well, how about the CHL? Not having I know, Russians. that's what I'm saying. That's dude. goofy, dude. These Russian kids are like, Give me the fuck out of this no shithole shit. country. Can I please come over? I know. We let everybody else in. You can't let the Russians come in. What I the know. fuck's... Th- come on. Like, they're in cahoots with Putin. Get out of here. A lot of people have, like, the... <laughs> they U- have, they're all Ukrainian, too. They all family in Ukraine. A lot of them. Do you have a Ukrainian flag on your fuck Twitter? no, man. Like, the Ukraine, look. All y'all men all over there, you need to stick up for your own country. You know, uh, old boy from Ukraine, the president there? How much money do you think he's worth? Probably a billion dollars. You would say something like that, <laughs> wouldn't you? He makes like four hundred grand a year. And he's okay. worth like five hundred so million. The, what do you think that means, though? Okay, hold on. Five hundred million, a billion is like not far off from that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, but you okay. don't realize why you said that. Okay, like, so listen. Like, do, the do president you, here makes four sixty, four eighty, whatever. Y- yeah. It is. You, what do you think they make like five million dollars a year to be president? Doesn't yeah. surprise me. So hey, I hey, hey, dummy. Let yeah, me yeah, explain yeah. myself so one more time to you, dummy. To get money elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You don't 500 think I know million, that? Five hundred million dollars yeah. more. Yeah, just think about well, that. What for do you a think, like Obama's worth? Because he does. Well, we kind of could track on why they made mm-hmm. money. Joe Biden just bought a big ass house because he does. He gets paid five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand. Trump to do it. He didn't show his taxes, did he? Oh, jeez, Andy, Andy, <laughs> fuck Trump anyway. Like fuck all that. But my point is, like, you're looking at the Zelensky guy. Like he's the best. Like, well, he cut off every other media station, media corporation yeah. in Ukraine mm-hmm. to shut them down. Like we. Like the Ukraine's a Ukraine, man. Mm-hmm. Like those the men got to stick up for I'm not chirping people who, Get the have, women and the children who have the Ukrainian flag and Twitter. But I'm I just am. saying, I, I just don't think everybody truly knows as much as they, they like, think they know. I mean, Ukraine, where for you? What's next? We're for that. Yeah. What's next? Like, we're for that. Be like, can you break down okay. what's really happening? Yeah, really. Go ahead, break down. I can't. How about you point on a map where Ukraine is? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll wait for you because I really don't know the ins and outs. You know, I'll admit that it's very bizarre. You know, they'll get over it and. 
So that would be the one thing to kind of like stop uh, Ovi. But yep. listen, I like Ovi, and I love the Russian players in, so the, do I. in the NHL. I love them. Like this I love Buch, our Russians, too, here Buch in St. Louis. Buchnyevich. I love fucking... I love all... Uh, Topchenko. I love Barbie. I love all the guys. In the tank. All, tank, baby. What's up, laddie? His son, up? his son lost his... Uh, Tooth? Tooth on the ice during uh-huh. hockey practice. It runs in the family cute with the Tarasenko. Ty lost his tooth uh, also yeah. on the ice several months ago now. Probably wheeling and his dealing first. at the bar, <laughs> taking that tooth out. <laughs> like O'Reilly. Yeah, when the girls talk to you, take your tooth out. I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? Like, well, you know, like, I mean, me, 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 me. All right, let's get to Rupper. Playoff hockey, baby. We'll have lots of stuff for you on our uh, Instagram and our Twitter, man. Follow us and uh, hit that like button, too, man, and give us that five-star review. Yeah. Please. On everything. We got lots of ex- exciting stuff coming your way very, very soon on the Cam and Strick podcast. God dang right. Brought to you by Hair Club and HairClub.com. You know, Cam, we have our own landing page, HairClub.com slash Cam and Strick. 800-279-7878, baby. 800-279-7878. Go there. Book your first consultation from our landing page. And uh, or you can call, but just mention our name when you call. Yeah, and you're gonna save a boatload of money on your first consultation. Get it done. What quick. can they expect in their first appointment? Well, that you're losing your hair, mm-hmm. and they have uh, tons of different procedures that will help you regrow, the replace, thing. regrow, yeah. restore. Yeah. Dude, Easy. you can do everything. All the all the re's. Replace, restore, regrow. You don't want your hair falling out. Just talk to them. Mm-hmm. Change your life. Dude. I meant to ask Rupper about that because like there's videos of him with hair. Yeah, I know. He had some, like, shaggy-ass well, hair. We're not hair. catering to the people that already played pro hockey that have a million in the bank that are already married with four kids. We're talking about this 23, 24, 26, 28, 30-year-old mm. that's losing her hair. Yeah, that, 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 that transition that in I'm life. trying to, like, wheel some hot-ass chick, and like, my fucking hair is falling out. Mm-hmm. You're making a little bit of money. Like, get it done. Yeah. It's not embarrassing. Dude, I walk in there high-fiving people. What the fuck do yeah, I they're care? They're like, get this guy the Who, fuck out yeah, of here. What are those girls in there? So what? They're working there. They they probably have fucking <laughs> shit going down, too. Yeah. That's why we're, they're working there. Mm. Go in there like a fucking peacock and be like, I need shit done. Yeah. I'm a handsome son of a bitch. I'm making fucking money. I, I, I'm I a I'm a wheel at the bar. But my goddamn hair is falling out. What can you guys do? I got coin. What's up? Oh, you have a payment plan, too? Oh, that's even better. Perfect. Goddamn right. Yeah. You're investing in your own like self like uh, um, worth uh, worth positivity like yes. be you want to feel confident. Confidence is such a goddamn confidence big is thing. everything, Cam. It, it, thank you, Andy. I know. <laughs> thank you. It is in high school and and if workforce anywhere you go, mm-hmm. walking into a room, everything. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, you got to think about your goddamn bald spot like I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough. <laughs> I'm like Kate. Uh, when you're filming me, just make sure you get the side. Yeah. View. Well, yeah. you're not listening because I see that. I did say, you see oh, my ball? I've seen it Son several of a times. Bitch. I'm texting her right now. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Listen, replace, restore, renew. I should point out over 1,200 locations. That's a what lot. I wanted to say throughout North America. There's so a lot, there's a hair club location near you everywhere, and I see it during the Florida Panther games too. Don't make me stare at your stupid toes. With it's those flip flop season, man. Your flip flops, Cam. You will not see me with shoes so on. So goddamn corny. Unless I am, I could push you over right now, and you'd be like, oh, "What do I do? <laughs> Why would you do that?" Because I can. Because you have mm. stupid ass flip. If push came to shove yeah. right now, and I needed to say, Brody, mm-hmm. like you ain't doing shit with those yeah. stupid well, fucking foot. You're not on a beach. I got my loose Why goosey are you in my pocket, right, so it'll right, say when I fall it. down, it won't hurt as much. I can tell you that. Well, it's like it's just a goofy looking flip flops. They look Lucy.co, baby. All the flavors. Have you tried a different one now? Do you like a different I try one? All of them, dude. Yeah, I know. What's your favorite? Whatever's handy in my bag. Whenever I got to throw one in before I, you do won't it. even look at the front to see what, nah. what it is. You don't even Sometimes care. Sometimes it's you cinnamon. Point now. Sometimes it's winter grain. Mango. Sometimes it's mango. Pomegranate. Sometimes it's pomegranate. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Put this thing in my mouth and make me feel good. Yeah, and I'm they do, yeah, and okay. it works. <laughs> Say what you say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Lucy.co. Hey, use that promo code Cam and Strick and do it today. By the way, our Canadian folk, y'all love out there them. driving a truck, man, we haven't talked to our people in Saskatchewan in guys. a while. We so please much. say something to them. They reach out to me all the fucking me, time. No, they reach out to me, actually. I know who you Try are. You me. guys are reaching out. Try to, to me. get to me. <laughs> they, my shit's open, too. Like, I know you want to talk to me instead of Andy, like, you know, advice and stuff. We love all you guys. We got Lucy coming your way. 
they always ask for all kinds of different things, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know if it's hard to go across Canada right no, now. No, this can. But we're trying to we're trying with everything. But yes. the loosey goosey, man, get hooked up, baby. Let's go. And I want to see a picture. I want to see you fucking driving that truck. I want to see your blue collar ass neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I want to see you guys working on your truck and your garage. I want to see good old Canadian. You want to see that? I want to see you good old Canadian yeah. folk, baby. I love all y'all. Mm-hmm. I want to see what kind of beer you're drinking. Show me how much it costs to fucking spend on beer at the beer store. What the bitch about? Only, send it to me. I don't give a the damn. Only the gum is available over in Canada. I should point that out. Well, you that's a big deal, that, Lucy. It is a big deal. Here in the states, you can get the pouches and the lozenges too. The gum warning: works, Nicotine is an addictive chemical. I always got to throw that out there and let people know <sighs> the warning. Know, but Andy. but listen, if you're smoking darts, oh, you look like a pussy. <laughs> if you're smoking a and I smoked a ton of darts in Cabo, well, sure I got called did. out by some of the good old folk did in you? Canada. They're like, Janner, they're smoking darts. Like, well, I fucking, I'm a pussy. I'm like, I know, I know. It's all good. But I was smoking darts at Cabo, and I kicked my own ass. And at the Blues game. Oh, and at the Blues game. They wouldn't let your ass back in either. After God, that. was that Which serves you right. Why? Well, because you're out there Why? smoking darts. I'm hanging with the folk. I'm hanging with the dart folk. They're like, like, what's up, baby? like, Cam, you do that? Yeah, I'm like signing autographs, taking my clothes they're off. like, hold on. Guy. You put your smoke in your mouth, and like, like the people who smoke without using their f- hands... And just have it hang in there. Yeah, those are shit that, that, that was you. And just, yeah, you, like a good old cowboy. You talk with it, like, in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like a good old hey, cowboy. Uh, here, uh, give me your Like pen. the Winston I'll guy back in the day. You. No, with that Winston guy back in the day just always had in his <laughs> mouth, oh like, I'm a God. fucking cowboy. Don't be that guy. Choose Lucy Goosey instead. Yeah, that's true. Because if you do have a dart in your hand, I'm like, yeah, ah, I could just, probably smack your bitch cool. ass around. Lucy.co, please. And if you're a chick, I don't know if I like you. You know who I like? Car Shield. Yeah, so do I. Oh, I like Car Shield, man. Oh, I met a guy at the, 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 the golf tournament the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, talking about what Stevie What they say Boy. about me or something? No. Oh. No, they don't mention you at all. Oh. But uh, they talked about Stevie, and you know, like, Stevie loves you. I'm oh, like, Stevie's God damn, the he's best. fucking awesome, dude. Yes. And I was hanging out with military guys that Stevie knows. Okay, and you, you, you have nothing in common with those military guys. They want to hang out. I, I know the military guys. Oh, yeah, they you, like you, Andy. <laughs> they don't want to hang out with you. Okay. <laughs> You probably call him former military. <laughs> former military. Former, no, former no, Marine. No. Once a Marine, always a Marine, dude. And he's like, hell, oh, you're a former Marine. Yeah, listen, this motherfucker. Get out of my face. Okay. I'm a shit kicker. Yeah. You're not. Car Shield, 800-857-2481. Use that promo code CAM, which is very embarrassing. But you got to do it because it's going to save you 10%. It'll do what? Nothing. Well, what did you say it'll do? Well, you might get laid. <laughs> is, like that a, is, that the, <laughs> is that the Janny guarantee? I don't know. Mention my name. It might happen. <laughs> 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 car shield and car shield.com baby how about the better business bureau bbb.org man man oh man yeah go to a go to a hotel without going up on the bbb and figuring mm-hmm. it out remember i always say you guys get horny whenever you take your wife in a yeah, hotel i know like, i know well if it's a shitty hotel that's like the opposite effect she's okay, probably gonna break up with Nat- you. natasha's listening to this right hi now. girl what's up okay. girl and chris is listening hey, too. Cr- hey chris what's going on buddy how are you <laughs> hi chris how are you <laughs> natasha what's up is girl? that jamal yo, mayor's yo, yo, impersonation yo, yo. i heard you do a jamal mayor's impersonation what, what, what? how are you cam how are you sir <laughs> i'm jamal mayor's <laughs> Jammer's my guy. He doesn't talk like that. He was not happy the other night. Oh, God, I don't blame Jammer him. Jammer was not happy the other night. I don't blame him. Jammer was not. So we all went to the Blues game. We had to uh, shake hands with Stiefel, who just bought uh, oh, that's my guy. a shit ton of had money. Had him on during the game. Hung out with him at an event the night before. Great guy. Dude, they, these guys make like $12 million a year or something. Yeah, he's a fucking big dick, dude. And, and you know, you put the, jer- the uh, sponsor on the jersey. It's a a big deal. They paid the fucking blues mm-hmm. a lot of money. Listen to all y'all bitching about that. Stop bitching. Shut the fuck up. They made fucking money. So your time at yeah, Enterprise but every team I'm in the league saying, is. Doing they it. all do it. So anytime you're at the Blues game, like that extra fucking millions of dollars are coming in, like that, it helps you mm-hmm. in the long run. Just so you know, the product on the ice, the beer, the everything, it helps you. Anything that's new, it's, it takes. There's like an adjustment for people. It's like the the advertisements on the helmet, so which anyway. you don't even notice really. So Jammer, mm-hmm. yeah, he had his jersey, <laughs> but yeah. How many games did he play with the Blues? Like almost six hundred. He didn't have a name on the back of his with jersey. the Blues, not not his entire career. He played over a thousand. He didn't have his name on the back of his jersey. No, I mean, he's that like, what the bo- fuck is that this? That would bother him. It bother me. That would bother me too. I right? was laughing because I'm like, God damn, because I, I oh, love you shouldn't it. laugh at that. No, it, no, I, I didn't mean. You're right. I didn't mean to laugh, but he was just like, God damn, and I'm like, Yeah, well, he should have been. I would have been like, God damn. We're all princesses, man, mm-hmm. in our own way. Like, we yeah, bust yeah, our ass for yeah. that organization. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like, 
Keep my name on so the So, Stiefel, by the way, you probably check them out on the Better Business Bureau. What kind of reviews do you think they have? Oh. Top notch. Damn right. Best reviews. But if you go into a there. hotel, like, again, you're. Like, you want to get freaky with What your about girl. a restaurant? Or a restaurant. Any, well, restaurants, like, they come and go. Like, you, Jesus. <laughs> you go to a restaurant, you have a shitty steak. Like, ah, uh, all right. But if you go to a hotel and you get fucking shitty shitness in that hotel where there's bed bugs and stuff because you didn't go to the BBB, your girl's going to hate you, man. Mm-hmm. Like, all that cool sex things that you're, like, craving. You're like, I can't wait to get freaky with my wife for the first time because the kids aren't here. Now you got bed bugs crawling up you know yeah, what. I know. Like, you ain't getting freaky. No. 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 Yeah, no? No, you're not. You're not. But, you know, you've got to check out those reviews. Check out the charity reviews as well, because if you're donating money to charity, you want to make sure you're putting good money. Oh, that's another Your thing. money. Jesus. It's like when I know, like, a player one time had some legal issues and was asking, like, there was a third party asking other players for money, and one player said to me, oh, why Lord. would I put good money into bad money? And that's what I'm talking about. Dude, I get you, man. Yeah, so you man, can't be doing all that. There's a lot of shady-ass charities. Say hi to Natasha. Hey, girl, what's up? Say hi to Chris. Hey, Chris, how, are, how art thou? How art thou? We love the BBB. BBB.org, yeah, man. man. Like millions and millions of just look customers this, have the, gone get, to get, 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 the Better Business Bureau. Put it in your phone and look it up. It's simple. Say what's up to Danny Boy, Dan Bellman. Danny Boy, what's up, home buyer? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> you know he's geared up for the playoffs. Oh, he's rocking oh, He's around, ready dude. to go. Danny Boy's like, no, I don't fuck around. No. We're selling cars. Oh, yeah. We're watching Blues Hockey. Yeah, they're not just selling cars. They're buying cars. They're buying cars, selling cars. We do what the fuck we want. That's what Bellman does. Your wife can go buy a car there and not get creeped out by a bunch of swinging Does that dicks. still happen, you think? Yes, Andy. Like, explain that. Because I, I, I would... Well, a girl walks up, Hey, y'all, I know you from high school. You're, you're, is that your husband, Kane? I used to beat his fucking ass. I'm a big dick mother... No, you're mm. not. No, you're not. You're a small dick son of a bitch. Can, Shut up. Can I tell you this? Yeah. Because spring is here. It's time to review your vehicle's condition and your needs. Like, winter weather... In road conditions, Cam, they put a lot of wear and tear, stain on your vehicle. Yeah, I know. Okay? Like, you just look underneath your car sometimes. You can see what's going on. So now's the time to get everything checked out. Make sure you're up to date and all your maintenance. Make an appointment in Troy, Missouri at Bellman and Bellman.com. Make the appointment today at one of Bellman's two service centers for a complete vehicle and tire inspection. Oh, my word. Yeah, you need that. They'll get you in and out fast. Your vehicle running its best just in time for the warmer weather. I saw, like, the weather was nice. People bring out their nice cars in the weather, in the nice weather, man. They bring out their nice cars. No, they usually bring their shitty cars out in the nice weather. I've always chirped you for the Corvette. Now, your Corvette probably wasn't as cool as the one that I saw yesterday. Now, the Corvettes make some nice-ass no, cars I look, right now. I don't look like a Batmobile, dude. It was bad. Did it? I made, was I'd ex- it yellow? I, I've spent, like, 30 grand extending the wheel. Well, that's a waste of money. Like you're wasting your money. Who was your financial advisor? Oh, God. I didn't answer, <laughs> I didn't answer his text. You did <laughs> Cam, you spent thirty five grand last month. Oh my! Oh, God. is that bad? Anyway, hey, maybe time for a new vehicle too. Yeah. So order a new Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram to your exact specifications because that's how you can build it out now, however you want it. Okay. I check saw out one of those things. Check out one of Bellman's. They got like over a hundred and fifty, hundred and thirty, something like that, used cars on the lot right now. Am right. Baby. So again, check it out, Troy, Missouri. Buick, GMC on one side. Buick. Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram on the other. Cam's looking at that pink Jeep, that small Buick. tires, two I want doors. that Buick. Yeah. And if they got a, you got a vehicle you want to sell, then now's the time to do that, too. All right. Now it's also the time to listen to uh, Rupper. He's got some great stories. Great storyteller. <laughs> He's friends with Pat McAfee. Yeah. We want McAfee on the show, by the way. We love him, man. Pat. He's cool as shit. Like, that's the American... Does he make you laugh? It's the American dream. I'm just asking. I mean, he's kind of like... He, he, is he kind of nerdy he, to you? I, he, I, I don't know. But he's football. Like, and football's so big. He's got, like, his arms aren't even that jacked. And he's got always... He doesn't make me laugh. No, he reminds me of those, uh, like, the redneck comedian guys. You know we, yeah. you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Well, what's Jack, com- Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah, he, Jack, he's like... You might be redneck. You no, know, he's rah, rah. like one of those guys. No, he's not. No, he's he kind fl- of is. No, but he just... I like what he does. Mm-hmm. He did a backflip. And I'm like, you're athletic. I've never but seen him do But when he stands up, he doesn't look that jacked. He doesn't make He's me laugh. He's a punter. I'm just saying. What do you mean? Expect, you ever seen that? Well, now some some punters nowadays are jacked. I'm just saying. You look at some of these punters. And when you're a punter, you're probably like, uh, I got to yeah. do something else in my life. Yeah. Okay. You I'm just be, saying. You got a vehicle you want to sell, go see Bellman. Okay, All fine. right. Now it's time for Rupper. Right. Mike Rupp. Mr. Everything. On this edition of the Cam and Strick Podcast. Enjoy. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on. And you know, right off the bat, you're going to have to spend 
thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now to the Cam. interview. What up? What's going on? <laughs> what up? Hey, listen, you do a podcast, which I don't know if, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people know. Maybe they don't. But, like, who do you do the podcast with? How would you get set up with those guys? Like, what's the story with your podcast? Yeah, so it's it's under the Pat McAfee umbrella. Um, and uh, they had uh, Roots. Yeah, we just do, like, kind of like a Wednesday night. It's kind of a, it's always a live show on YouTube. And so we'll get a guest and we'll do like kind of like watch along and interview kind of at the same time. So it's kind of a bunch of bunch of knuckleheads talking hockey. And it's been good. It's been really good because um, I don't know if you guys know who Pat McAfee is or not, but oh, yeah. his, his following is um, it's, it's not really the hockey following. Yeah. So it's been really cool because like we get a ton of like we have a lot of like diehard hockey fans, but we got a ton of like new hockey fans that are like and it's fun to like, you know, I don't know. It's just it's different. Cause it's like a totally different re- reach for people. So, you know, there's probably a lot of people in the hockey world that don't know about us. So yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind plugging it, that'd be sweet. Yeah. We, we decided not, we're going to edit that out. Actually. <laughs> well, I, Andy, I told you I went yeah. on with him Yeah, and I didn't know who the guys were. Who are they? The guy with the beard. And so yeah. they, they work for Mac. I thought, like, I just thought those were like your buddies from like back That's in the I day thought. or whatever. So though they work for McAfee, McAfee does yeah, a hell of a job. And listen, I said yeah, it over and over, man. I, I, that, that's kind of like our vision of what yeah. we want to do. We're working on that right now from a YouTube standpoint. I want to have like a set. I mean, this guy is, yeah. he's huge. He's, killing, he's man. like he's, a punter, yeah. but he's, he's got that personality, you know? He's, he's got like, there's, I'm telling you guys, they're going to make a movie of this guy someday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like his, the stuff that he's done. His, I mean, it's, it's like, um, it's just kind of like one of those like outliers that just chasing his dream and doing things that are kind of against the grain and stuff that people would probably advise not to do and he would do and he's been crushing it and uh just yeah man it's been unbelievable so really like before this last year has been unbelievable for for his group there and um they they've done an unbelievable job i mean from the standpoint of you know, they're they're the biggest i think they're the biggest in a lot of people sports outlet kind of like off you know off the main waves of you know the big networks and like he's got Aaron Rodgers coming in during yeah. in season every Tuesday, Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays, and he gets, you know, they've had they have Joe Rogan on, they have the Dana White, like he, Vince Vince McMahon came in studio with them, like he's, you know, in, in his story's nuts. And people that, that that wouldn't know it, he, you know, he was a he was a punter, and in the NFL he was, um, you know, an All Pro at the peak of his career best punter in the NFL and just said he wasn't like, he wasn't really fulfilled and he uh, just stopped playing. And it was like a big, big thing. And he wanted to kind of chase what he wanted to do. And he's built this brand. He's bit, he's got his, his boys with them that he grew up with. It's a cool story. They're based out of Indianapolis. They just signed a massive deal with FanDuel um, and they're building a new studio out in Indianapolis. And he, Jeez, I mean, bouncing all over the place. He's, you know, he's he does SmackDown on Friday nights, WWE. He Doing wrestled at, flips and shit. Yeah, he wrestled <laughs> at Wrestle. He wrestled at WrestleMania. Um, you know, he, I, there's a lot of rumors out there that all the all these big platforms are trying to get his show to move over to him. So yeah, he's Amazing. been nuts. It's it's crazy what he's doing. But anyways, before before the kind of all this stuff was happening it was just the beginning of the hockey season i've wanted to do a podcast forever i mean i've listened to you guys i listened to chicklets and I, I i listened to 32 thoughts i i got like my ones i listen to all the time and i've wanted to do something for years and it just never really felt like the right fit i didn't know how like i don't i didn't know what to you know whatever and i started listening um going around listening to a couple different ones that i haven't heard from and that's hockey talk existed right and the flow of it and the feel of it i'm like i that's what i want to do so i didn't know these guys um, when that Trashers documentary came out, I was a guest on McAfee's show, and then um, he DM me, asked if I come on the show, and then I asked him, I said, "Hey, who's your hockey guy?" And he said, "Nick Moraldo." And so I called Nick, and I was just like, "Hey guys, like I don't know, I know you guys got something going, but 
I'd love to be a part of it. And like, we could try to figure out and they were like, yeah, that'd be sweet. Like, you know, I think it was good for both of us. And, uh, yeah, just been, Who's Nick going about it. that's, that's his, that's his buddy. He works on the show. So on the Pat McAfee show, they've got, you know, his whole crew is on the show with them. And, and Nick is, is one of the guys, uh, on his show. And then, uh, Gumpy Gumps is, uh, is the guy with the big beard. He's from Vancouver originally. It's a crazy story how he got there. I, I, I think that he was like, I think he, I might be getting this wrong. I think he called in to the Pat McAfee show was like a fan of the show. And I'm pretty sure like Pat heard his voice and his delivery. Like he's, he, his comedic timing, like he doesn't say a ton all the time, but his mm-hmm. comedic timing and how he says it, it's, it's, I don't know. He's, he's got like a Canadian, he's got like a Canadian accent that sounds like, he sounds like a, I don't know. I think he sounds like a kind of like a surfer and the way he delivers these things, it's like Pat, I guess was like, I want this guy. And they hired him and uh, moved him from Vancouver to Indianapolis. He's been a part of their crew and he's the, he's the co-host on their, their big, uh, the big gambling show called hammer down. And it's just a nuts story. But anyways, yeah. that's how I kind of met up with these guys. It's been a blast. I love doing it. And uh, yeah, man, it's on Wednesday nights, eight o'clock and, we got we got Henrik Lundqvist popping on with us for a few few minutes. Never to, heard of him. Never, never heard, heard of him. I don't know who I've heard of Nick, but not him. I know, yeah, I yeah his story guy. his story's not as not as extravagant, but hey, yeah. you know, we'll, the ugly yeah. fellow from uh, Rangers. <laughs> hey, yeah. listen, but you know, but it's uh, it's cool though because like I watched a bunch of it today, like in my world class like research and preparation well, for should. the interview. And listen, because it kind of shows some of your personality, Rupert. And like, you know, obviously, you know, been on your radio show and, like, you know, a bunch of times, watched you on television, followed your career. But like, even like over the course of your career, like there's been several times where you've been mic'd up and whatever, and you get a, a more of an inside look at who you are. But on television, like you got to be buttoned up. Like, like, how much do you enjoy that? Do you wish you had more flexibility, like to kind of do what you're doing on the podcast? Do you enjoy the balance of it or, or do you really kind of enjoy just kind of teeing off and, and being yourself? Like, how do you look at what you're doing right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that from, yeah, I think you guys, I don't want to speak for you guys, but you guys are in the same boat where yeah. it feels good to just be able to speak freely. Right. Yeah. And it, it, all the things can work hand in hand. It's like, you know, um, the NHL network is obviously aware that I do this and, and they, you know, the feedback I got from them, that, that's great. You know, um, it's, you know, it's different. I can't say the things I'm saying on this, on that's hockey talk on the NHL network, or at least in that, in that way. But, you know, both, both of them can coincide and, uh, it, that that's a good thing. But I think that everybody, everybody that is in the business of media, that's why we're seeing all these podcasts, these different fields. It's, it gives you a glimpse. You can just be more yourself, right? And you can control kind of the content and control how it's going out there. And and uh, I don't know. It's it's refreshing, you know, because there's times like, you no, know, I'm working in Pittsburgh, okay, and I do pre- Pittsburgh pre and post. Like, I, I have to. I, I've always been. I don't think I'm one that plays a homer. But there's plenty of times I want to blast the Penguins for how they're playing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, not blast them. I'm like, you know, whatever. Like, there's, but like, there's times where there's just things like if I'm calling it the way we're seeing it. Like, if I was sitting there, strict. If it was me, you, and Janny having a beer, like I want to say what I'm saying there. Mm-hmm. I don't have to. I don't have to swear when I say it, but I want to say that. I think that's what the fans want to hear. And this gives me a platform to be able to do that, right? So um, I, I love that, and it kind of itches that. You know, or what was it? Scratch that, that itch. Up. Scratch that itch. Yeah, yeah itch that scratch. Scratch that itch. You know, maybe I should stick to basic things. But anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it, it it does that. It it satisfies that that part of it. So I love it. I get that, man. And you know, you're so busy. Every time I turn on TV, I see you. I see you everywhere. And like, there are some nights where you're like, "Damn, I did Pittsburgh last night." Now they're asking me about fucking Florida. I'm like, I haven't watched that game. Like, do you ever get like, do you ever stumble and say, you know what? I, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about on this because it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on and you got to break down basically everything. It is hard, but I mean, I've, I sit there and, uh, you know, I rely on, I, I know, Jenny, I think I probably reached out to either of you guys. I've reached out to Panger a number of times too, because it's like, I'll be, I don't like, I hate it, It's equivalent to like, I don't know, in hockey, like, not knowing what to do on a four check and mm-hmm. like feeling like feeling like you're getting caught 
with your pants down. And like, I, it's the worst feeling in the world. You know what I mean? Like I hate it. So I hate going on air and not knowing I'm not, I'm not saying I know it all, but not feeling prepared. So like, there'll be times where maybe it's like, Hey, I'll shoot panger attacks, panger. Uh, this is what I think, but you know, you see that more than, than me and up close more than I do. Like what, is this accurate? And then, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's, yep, you're bang on. And sometimes it's, uh, eh, you know, that's not really how the feel is. It's more this. And then, so then I, you know, it's, so it's gotta be whether, you know, yeah. Cause you're right, Jenny, I can't watch every single game. You know, I'll have times so where, I mean, I'm watching a ton, but you know, when there's seven games on one night and there's, you know, 14 on the next, it's like, you get a little overwhelmed. So you got to have some sort of plan in place, do a lot of reading and stuff like that. But it's, it's fun. You find a little bit of a rhythm on doing it. And, uh, you know, it's been working out good, but I rely on other people and, and their kind of Intel as well. So, um, that's a big component of it. You know, your story is kind of crazy too. It kind of reminds me of like a, uh, like a kid from St. Louis making it to the NHL because, you know, there was, there was a time where guys just weren't making it. Cam, Cam was the first one to come out of St. Louis to make it. Are you the first one out of Ohio to make it to the NHL? Like, were there guys before you or no? Jenny, you were the first out of St. Louis. Get on with yourself. Damn right, that's baby. That's sick. That's sick, man. Yeah. No, that's really good. Like, you know, I mean, I wasn't the um, – I'll put it this way. Like, and this is not I, – I was – I might have to double check that. I think there's a couple that were born in Ohio, but mm-hmm. didn't grow up in Ohio. Yeah. Um, doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, cause Pat LaFontaine, think, yeah. he, he would have been the first one from St. Louis, but he moved out of here when okay, he was like yeah, six or yeah, seven. We so, don't count him. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think like Mo Mantha was born in Ohio, but I don't think he grew up in Ohio. Right. So, uh, but like the first Brian Holzinger was the first, full-time long career guy from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brian Smolinski was from Ohio. I think he was from a different part of Ohio though. I think he was more towards Toledo area maybe, but, uh, so there's like Smolinski, um, you know, Brian Holzinger. Um, yeah, I mean, me, I, I, one of the guys, I guess that played a long career uh, from Ohio. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, it's, there wasn't many, there wasn't many in, starting to be more and more from Ohio now. And due to the Columbus blue jackets coming in and, and kind of building things out there, we see all the guys from Columbus that are making it now. So it's, it's pretty sweet to see it now. Oh yeah. No, that's the, the same thing state. here in St. Louis, man. You just see more and more oh, guys. Well, you guys are pumping out first round picks like know, fucking yeah, well, left and right. So I, I had to pay the bill. I know. I know. So, yeah. okay. But like you didn't start playing until you were nine. I mean, like, like what kind of player were you growing up? Like, did you expect to, to like have a career in hockey? Like how, how did things click for you? I've heard guys, you know, who didn't start till later in age, but they're like much older than you. I mean, like for your era to make it to the National Hockey League after not starting to play till you're nine or 10 years old, man, is almost unheard of. Yeah. So I, I started playing, um, I started playing when I was, when I was six and, um, I played all sports though. Like I didn't, you know, I'm one of those people that believes that you need to, you don't need to, cause there's people that just play one sport and they, they're very successful. I think it's great to play all sports and get a break. Cause I started coaching kids when I got done playing as well. And it was like, I noticed a difference with the kids that would get away from hockey and play baseball or actually don't even play anything in the summer, just be a kid run around, you know, create havoc <laughs> and uh, just be a kid. And so then when hockey came back around in the fall or at the end of the summer, when you started, you know, your skates, it was like, these kids were, bugging them dad when when can i get on the ice when can i get on the ice you know hockey's back and you had that that edge and when when kids were going all year i felt like it was just another day you know what i mean and and that that excitement really wasn't at at the same level so i I played all sports um which i think helped me and um but i i didn't know i mean i was always i was always bigger than everybody else as a kid so i you know, had good skills playing hockey, but I was bigger where I could just kind of do what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until I got to be a sophomore in high school. Um, actually my, uh, it was probably my, uh, no, it's probably like eighth and ninth grade with the U S program where I started going to like the immense playing for your district. I played mm-hmm. for the mid district and went up to Minnesota and played in those, the, the festival. Oh, yeah. And that's when I, I was up there and I like led the festival and scoring two years in a row. And then I got to see all the other, our team got spanked. We 
bit good because we're mid am we get spanked by team michigan or i think they called it minkota which is obviously minnesota and the dakotas combined and um but i i, I found out that i can play with the best in in, in our age uh, 80 birth years in the country and up there was cool because that's when i saw like david Legwand, and we started like you know you start seeing all these other 80 birth years and so that kind of pushed it and then i i started playing up in uh playing triple a for team and uh, so i was just playing high school hockey and cleveland which wasn't that strong and i played for team ohio and i go up and i play against like the toronto young nats and we're playing against oh, yeah. you know now we're going up there we're playing against you know CompuWare and little caesars and, and i'm yeah I mean, like i'm looking eye to eye with a lot of guys on their team which wasn't the case in my little corner of the hockey world i was the biggest so i can do what i wanted now i'm going up there and i'm i'm dealing with kids the same size as me so then when i'd come back from tournaments I just kind of always wanted to be a hockey player and I'd come back and, and no one had to say anything to me, but I realized like, Hey, I'm not as, I'm not as big and, and, and that good. There's a lot of kids out here <laughs> that can do that. The things I'm doing. Right. So it kind of like pushed me to push myself harder. And, uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, I played high school hockey and then uh, right from my high school hockey, uh, I played through my junior year, and then I got drafted in the OHL. Um, so I went from high school to the OHL. That was a that was an eye opening experience. Man. Um, oh my gosh! Who was in that yeah. fucking league? By the way, and they saw you creeping <laughs> hey, around in warm ups. Hey, can you fix your damn Wikipedia page? By the way, it said well, nine. It, it said nine years old. That's what yeah, you started. Yeah, you screwed started, that you up, know? Andy. I, I started when I was nine. <laughs> It but, sounds better than I actually I didn't even, I just started playing when I was nineteen. I said I just walked right in the NHL. It yeah. sounds better. No, yeah, no, it's uh yeah, it's uh it's funny though, going to the O though, and, and Jenny would know this too, and you probably had to experience it to some degree too, because like people are gonna judge you based on where you're from and where you play, right? So I came in, first off, our high school colors were um green and gold. Our we looked like the fucking Green Bay Packers. Like we had a big as St. Ward High School and we had a big E on our gold helmets green pants with gold stripe down the side like it, it looked like i was like coming from like a roller hockey team right and i go to the ohl and these guys you're you know these are hockey players like i never had a i never had a fight in my life i barely had to hit because i was so much bigger than everybody and uh so i went into i went to the ohl i got drafted by the windsor spitfires and i i went up and i was playing in, um in camp and it was, like i was just like uh I was like a target, right? Like this is the big, you know how it is. Like, dude, you're a big kid. People are going to challenge you all the time. And I remember it was actually funny. This is my first interaction with Matt Cook. Uh, he was on the team in Windsor. And I remember, um, <laughs> I remember coming in there and I was like, you know, I didn't know anybody. So at first it was kind of like, you know, this is our first round pick. Like this guy, like, you know, look at him, look at his fucking uniform. Look what he's wearing. Look at his gear. Like, look at this, whatever. And in training camp, I was just getting whacked and whacked and whacked. Cause there's other guys that are trying to make the team or guys are on the team. that are trying to look, look bigger than they are like Matt cook. And he's trying to like send a message like to the, everyone, like how tough he is. And he's like picking on me the whole time. And I don't know really what to do because the fighting ex experience has never been, it's never been, I never had any of it. So I remember I came to the bench during a inner squad scrimmage in training camp. And one of the, the overagers, um, says to me, he goes, Hey, don't put up with that shit from cook from cookie. And I go, okay. And he goes, um, he goes, uh, he ain't going to do shit to you. Trust me. So he said, I'm like, all right. I'm like, so wait, like, wait, he goes to go, go fight him. And I'm like, all right. So it's, <laughs> it's in the middle of, it's in the middle of like the, um, there's no flood or anything. We just took a time out. Like in the, we just kind of played like two halves of an inner squad game. We had, you know, referees, everybody there. My parents came up for the day to watch in training camp. We had some, you know, parents and fans or whatever they were watching. So I just got up off the bench and I just skated to center ice. Well, both teams, you know, you pictured everyone's on the bench and then the guys stand out in front drinking water, taking a five minute break before the second half. And I just went out in the center ice and I, I took my helmet off, took my, dropped my gloves, took my helmet off. And everyone was staring at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I called, I called Cookie out to center ice fight. And all the boys were like, oh, Cookie, Cookie's challenge. Oh, the rookie's challenging you. The rookie's challenging you. And he didn't come out. He didn't come out to fight me. And then from then on, 
uh, I was like, the boys were like, that's not what you got to do. That's what you've got to be, you know, like whatever. And then from then on, like, uh, you know, Cookie was a lot nicer to me after that. Funny how that he works. He didn't come out. That's pretty pansy on him. I mean, and, on. And, and you're the new guy, too. Like, I saw that you play with him in Windsor. And then you play with him in Pittsburgh, too. And, like, you were in that yeah. game, right? Like, we've had Mark Savard on with us and whatever. And everyone's got an opinion on Matt Cook. Yeah. He won't do podcasts and some on. of this stuff. I yeah. mean, did you... Like, did you like him as a teammate? Was he, was he, did he cross the line in junior too? Or is that something that kind of evolved through in his NHL career? I mean, he, Cookie was always that, he was that, he obviously crossed the line often. And he was a guy that was maybe straddling the line all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, when I played with him, to be frank, I, I wasn't really looking forward to playing with him. Um, but I liked him. You know, we got along. Our kids were friends. Um, we hung out. Um, uh, you know, it was it was it was good to see him on a different level. But then there were certain times in games and those situations where, you know, I'll give him a lot of credit because I played with him there and I played with him in Minnesota as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, he 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 had this. I don't know how you. He could not understand what was a good hit and a bad hit. And he did put the work in though. Like by the end of his career, he had to, because he wouldn't have played any longer. And and I know for a fact in Pittsburgh that Mario pulled him aside because that's when the concussion stuff was going on with Sid and and all that. And, and, and I paraphrasing here, because I don't know what is exactly said, but I'm pretty sure it's like, Hey, one more and you're out of here. Not, not tolerating this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think if a, if a person like Mario says that you listen (laughs) and uh, cookie did, spent a lot of time watching videos and, and, and learning, but he was programmed. But, but I, I also think that, I mean, I'll say this for, for Jenny's situation too, like being an undersized guy in a big man's game at that time, you've got to cross the line once in a while, you've got to straddle the line, you've got to get noticed. And so people like, and players like Matt cook, it, Yes, he's got to take onus and blame on a lot of those situations. But at the same time, he was created that way. You know what I mean? Like, you're praised for that, for being a small, oh, look at this guy, he's nuts. He's, you know, he'll hit anything, he'll fight anybody, he'll do this, he'll do that. So, um, but, yeah, you know, there was times where, um, you know, I remember Dan Bilesma would have, a, we had a, there's a, we were playing a game and, and Cookie took a bad penalty, took like a, a double minor for high sticking. And we lost the game. And the next day in the video room, we're all sitting there and, and Biles was uh, playing the video and showing all of our bad things we did the game. And then he was showing this one and it's like a play for Cookie. And it's the play, you got the high stick. So say he's skating in the neutral zone and there's uh, he's skating forward and the defenseman in front of him skating backwards. And I think the defenseman poke checks the puck off the stick and it goes up in the air, like towards the... Um, it's right up in front of the defenseman's face and cook takes a swing at the puck. And I don't know, like, cause he's honestly, he was nuts. Like, I don't know if he was actually trying to get the puck or he thought that was a free pass to like, you know, get a guy, whack him in the face, but he smacked the guy is basically slashed the guy in the face with a stick and he was bleeding. He got a double minor. So, so Bilesma shows this video in slow-mo and then brings it back. Slow-mo brings it back. Does that like three or four times. And he just turns to cookie and he goes, Cookie, what are you doing? And and Matt goes, that wasn't a penalty. Goes, <laughs> and, and all of us in the room started laughing. We're like, what? And, and and he's adamant that wasn't a penalty. And he goes, well, I. And so now Biles was like, well, hold on a second. You explain to me how that's not a penalty and how. And I don't remember the terminology, but he basically, in his explaining what happened, said, I was, you know, it, he basically used a definition of a penalty in his defining of what happened on the play. And I remember Biles was like, you used literally the the phrasing of a penalty for what you like. He's like, it's not a penalty. It's not a penalty. And like the meeting just went off the rails. Cause it was like, he, he, Biles wanted to admit that he did something wrong. He would not do it. Like it, it, it's like in his mind, he could never say like, yes, I made a bad decision on this one. You know what I mean? So I think that that's kind of like something that he always struggled with until the end of his career. And, Mm. um, he did put the work in and, and, and he, and he cleaned it up, but man, yeah, I mean, I was there for that terrible, like uh, the Mark Savard play. I mean, uh, it was awful, man. He was, uh, 
you know, that was there for Eric Carlson when he cut his uh, Achilles. He cut his Achilles. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, he knocked out Ryan McDonough with a hit. And he got suspended. That was kind of like the last draw of suspension. And it was uh, Kane yeah. buckled his ass at one time though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Commander yeah. Kane. We were Sometimes playing in we Atlanta. That, yeah. yeah. But you know, I always but, wonder, like Rupert, like guys like him and and Rafi Torres and some of these guys, like who who. They're kind of like the, the the poster child, right, for those type of hits and whatever from from the time in the game when the league was trying to get rid of those type of hits, right? It was like those were the hits that they were showing. Like just how they dealt with that. Like after the game in the room, like as his teammate, knowing that now the next time you play them, you got to fight. I think you fought Chara, right, shortly thereafter, yeah. you know? Like, I mean, did does it get – like as a teammate, do you just kind of like, oh, my God, like I'm sick of doing this shit or – is it just kind of like part of the game? He's one of us. He's on the team. We 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 got to go out there and protect him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's you got you got to do it. You got and what are you gonna? You know what I mean? Like we, I can't be the, the the decider of who I'm going to fight and what I'm going to fight for, and like that that's not really my job. So um, you know, it, yeah, I mean, I there would be times where I'd feel like okay, I got to go do this because of that. Like really. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I got to go get my face punched in. And, because uh, he's not going to step up. Right. That. So that's how that Boston game went. So the Boston game, we're going into Boston. And and front like on the front page of like the Boston Herald. It's not the front page of the sports section. It's the front page of the fucking Boston Herald. Yeah. It has a wanted. It's like an old Western, <laughs> like wanted dead or alive. It, says. <laughs> and it has it has a picture of Matt Cook with his with his toothless smile. And I'm like, this is, uh, so when we went there as the penguins, we brought extra security and, uh, you know, honestly, I think cookie liked the attention to be honest with you. Really? Like, you know, we would, we went there and I remember, I remember it was like, um, you know, we were going out, we were going out to eat and we were kind of like, Hey, maybe you should stay back and order room service. Like, you know, Boston, it was nuts and what happened and everything. It's like, we don't. Who knows? Like we don't we don't need to be getting in a big brawl at a restaurant or, or you know whatever. And uh, and he's like, no, I'll be fine. I'm like, well, it's not really about you being fine. We don't want to get shit, you yeah. know. And so like he went out to dinner and whatever, and everything's fine. So when we go to the rink the next day. I remember in um, in warmups, uh, it, it we went out there and Billy Garen was stretching at the red line and Mark Recchi, which is you know obviously their buddies, was stretching at the red line. And I guess Rex says to Billy. Um, Hey, just, uh, as long as, as long as cookie answers the bell, um, we can move on. But if he's not going to answer the bell, this is going to get ugly. And so Billy's like, all right. And he goes, uh, he goes, Sean Thornton's Sean Thornton's, um, wants him. And Billy's like, all right, I'll pass a message on. So he (laughs) must've talked to, to Matt. And, uh, so we're in between uh, before the game starts and, we had a pretty tough team, you know. I it uh, Eric Goddard was there. Ooh. I think I'm trying to remember was Derek England playing in that game. He may have been playing in that game too. And I remember we kind of like in the locker room, Goddard, uh, Godzi was like, kind of brings the three of us together, and he's like, "So how do we want to handle this?" And uh, he's like, "You know, and the what we said is, yeah, you know, Cookie needs to stand up for what he did, but at the same time." if he fights once he doesn't need to fight three times so we're like you know uh he went out there he fought sean thornton came at him first shift they fought and uh as the game went on you know big z wants to do something about it too and he was really like he was he was actually he was really it was actually very strange how polite he was in asking me to fight um it was like it actually made it more creepy when a guy's like asking you in a very classy yeah. way to fight. It was like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? He wants <laughs> you to know? kill you. Yeah. So uh, he he was like, uh, I think we were winning one or two not then, and he was asking me to go. And I'm like, see, I get it. Like, you know, what? But I'll give it to you in the third. But I'm I'm not gonna do it right now. The next shift he'd ask me, and then I kind of like I told you later, you know, whatever. And he's like, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm the captain of this team, and that was bullshit. What happened? I got to do something. I, I know I'll give it to you, but I, it's gonna be later. And then uh, eventually we scored. I think it was like three nothing. So now the store the score starts going a little bit out of out of control. And I lined up for a center ice face off after the goal, and Sean Thor like 
leans in next to me and he goes, Hey, the big man wants you. And I look back and Z's like, he's got both his, he's got both his palms facing up and he's just going, come on, come on. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, <laughs> we dropped the gloves and, and that was, uh, probably shouldn't have squared up with him. But anyway, so, but yeah, you know, so in those situations, like, yeah, you had to do it, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, look at it. I, I, again, like I, I like cookie. I think that he was brought up to play the game a certain way and being dirty was part of it. And he, it, it, there was a time and when he played where that was, it was never, I guess, okay. But then he played there that time, that time when the league crossed over to a different area. And, um, I'm glad it did. Cause I mean, that marks of art thing was terrible. Mm. Um, I wish that never would have happened. I mean, it, and you know, that's rule 48 and, and, uh, that to this day is the Matt cook rule. And the league never wants to see one of those hits again. Yeah, he was a hitter, man. He'd catch it on those back check hits and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, and we all kind of did that for a while there until we all started kind of getting dinged for it. But you speak of Eric Goddard, man. God, is he an underrated tough guy. I tried to mm-hmm. talk to him, Andy, by the way, on uh, Facebook, get him on. He's like, man, I just don't do that. How, how was he, man? Like, he knocked guy. He He's a giant slayer. Like, he knocked out Bugard. He bagged up Simon. Yeah. Like, God, was he tough. He- Not too many people talk about him. He is mo- one of the, if not the most loved teammate that I played with too. Everybody loved Godzi. Yeah. He never said, he never said boo about anything. He would, if he didn't play for 12 straight games, he'd come in, he'd fight Derek Bugard. Yep. And then Derek Bugard want to fight him again. He'd fight him again. And, you know, Godzi would never complain, never do anything. He was just a great guy. Um, he's hilarious too. We had a, so uh, the owner at the time um, was Ron Burkle, and um, he had the team out to his every time we go out to the California trip because you know Ron, uh, as I believe, but he had a, a big place out in like Hollywood. So he'd bring us out there, and um, we went to his house, and it was this big, huge, you know, you can only imagine like the the mansion that it was. But at uh, dinner, we we're having this big dinner at his house. And he, uh, we get there and, uh, for, like just a random cast of characters. There's like, there's like Victoria's secret models that were there, like oh, serving Lord. drinks. Oh, and then oh, there Lord, was, Lord. and then there was, uh, Fred Durst, you know, Limp Biscuit was there, um, and David Spade. And so, uh, it was cool for us. Like we're going off talking to these guys and like, you know, you know, whatever. And, um, so we're sitting at dinner and we got a bunch of these round tables in this big room at the, at the mansion. And, and, uh, we're at a table and Godsey's at the table and someone says to Godsey, like, you should go shoot check David Spade. And, uh, and Godsey's <laughs> like, really should I? And I'm sure you, you know, you guys know what it is, but, um, yeah. you know, the, the listeners like shoot checking us fucking kindergarten hockey players in the NHL. Every time we go out to uh, uh, five-star restaurants, we're climbing under the table and we're basically, you send a rookie under the table to go and, and take whatever it is, butter. Um, what do you, what else would it be, Jenny? Like oh, sometimes it's ketchup, salad dressing, ketchup. I mean, ketchup. Disgust, yeah. Whatever disgustingness yeah. you have on the table. Yeah. On your yeah, nice you, shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the guys, you know, if the guys had like, you know, thousand dollar shoes, like you, that's a big target. Right. And you go over there and you just wipe Uh. garlic butter all over the fucking toes of the shoes. (laughs) And uh, so, and then the guy would crawl back under the table, be unnoticed and then sit back down. And then everybody takes, um, you know, it's like weddings when you toast the glasses, ding, 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 ding. All the guys start doing that. And all, when you hear that immediately, all the chairs get pushed back and everyone looks at their shoes and so in restaurants, you just picture 20 guys doing this. Everyone turns at this moment. You're ding, 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 ding. And all the chairs just go boom, like simultaneously. And they look at their, their shoes. And so David Spade was sitting there. <laughs> Godzi climbs under the table. And so we have to uh, notify someone at David Spade's table. That this is happening so they can like let him under. And they're like, okay. So he kind of like moves his legs over a little bit. So Godzi has like a little path to get under the table, gets under the table, goes under there. And, um, he comes back and his, his spoon of like butter still has uh it's still on his spoon. And we go, and he goes, I can't, I can't do it. I, I'm like, why? We go, why? He goes, the fucking guy's sitting Indian style on his chair. <laughs> He's like, I never see anything like it in my life. He's like, who does that? So he crawled under there, got up to David Spade's chair, and you couldn't tell from, you couldn't tell from his waist up, but he was sitting Indian style. So then he's like, so then he's like, all right, I'll try again. So he went under there and he 
doused him like while it was Indian style and uh, got it all over his shoes. No one noticed. Came back, ding, 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 ding. All the chairs push out. So, of course, all the chairs push out and Fred Durst and and uh, David Spade are like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And uh, they end up saying, uh, you know, guys are like, check your shoes. And David Spade checks his shoes and he, it was great. He just stands up and he goes, fucking guys like he just starts cursing us all out <laughs> like just messing around like and it's like you know we we kind of initiated i guess david spade at the pittsburgh penguins but god's he was like that guy like just he'd do anything like to, for a laugh he just he was a great guy he stuck up for you all the time god was he tough um, man yeah god, he was tough as nails damn. tough as nails that's uh-huh. funny man fucking tough and David Spade is kind of like a oh, yeah. hi, I'm David. You know, it's all he is a, yeah. he is an Indian. He is a he is a yeah. Indian style sitter. Oh right? yeah, I know. I can I can easily picture that. Yeah. But at least he was. And cool. he does the same. At thing. least he was cool about it. Yeah, no, he was super cool <laughs> you know, about it. But it was it was it was ask, funny. Let me ask him a question. You know, you you had such a especially early in your career. God damn, you know, you you have all the success with the Devils and stuff, but. You fucking bounce around like crazy. Like, why did they trade you? Why are you getting traded left and right in your earlier career? You're a Stanley Cup winner. You get the game winner in that. Nice little tip. I think you had two goals in that game. I don't know. I remember coming to training camp, and it was all about you and talking about you and this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, you get traded 15 times. I, I, why? Yeah, Horrible no. Question, um, by the way, but it's all good. Go ahead. No, no. Some of them were self-inflicted. Um, it, and I, I, was, I was a young you know, Jan, you knew me when I was younger. Like I wouldn't, I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you don't agree with this, but I, I don't consider myself. I was never arrogant. Um, I don't think to the, to the outside. I, but I, I had a belief in myself, like, and I knew that I can do more than I was asked to do. But the, the thing I struggled with in my career and Jenny was a part of it. The second time I came back to the devil's and I had to learn that is like, I had coaches early on that wanted something else out of me. They wanted a meanness out of me. And again, talking before, like I never, that wasn't a part of how I grew up playing hockey. So I had to like learn it at the professional level, even in the OHL, I didn't fight a ton. You know what I mean? I'd fight, I'd fight, uh, you know, five times a year, but it wasn't like I was a fighter. And, um, so I was always like a point getter growing up and, and, you know, I was, I can even score goals in the, in the, O. I was scoring goals. And, uh, so I, I think the big thing was I had coaches and Pat Burns was my first NHL coach and he was old school and he was hard and I was his whipping boy. Mm-hmm. And Scott Gomez always jokes around about, it. he goes, the best thing about you coming on the team rapper was that I wasn't the whipping boy any longer. <laughs> so <laughs> I was Pat's whipping boy. And I remember Joe Newendike sat next, next to me in, in the stall and he would be so good to me. Cause like, I'm like, there'd be times where Pat would give it to me. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know if I'm it's like, you start questioning everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, and man. Pat would just be crushing me and I, I'll never forget. So after the Stanley cup finals, we went, um, no, I was very fortunate in the finals in the last three games of the finals to play with Friesen and Langenbrunner, um, Jeff Friesen and Jamie Langenbrunner. And it was like, uh, with the most productive line those guys were, and I was able to be a part of it. So in game seven, you know, we went three, nothing, I get three points and I felt really good. Right. And that summer, and I didn't go to my head. I wasn't cocky. I didn't, I, you know, I, I still felt like I had to, I only played 30 games in the league at this point. So I hadn't knew I had to still make a team in training camp. So you come into training camp, and I, I swear we had like somewhere between eight and 10 preseason games. It was an absurd amount. And oh, yeah. so how it usually works, like you play one, you figure you're off the next one, or maybe you play two in a row, but then you'll be off the next one. We're playing one, two, three, four. I'm playing every game, every game, every game. And I'm thinking like, all right, I'm going to probably be off the next game, every game, every game. So uh, I played like seven games out of seven games and I was leading the team in points probably because I played seven games. Everyone else played like three. Right. So I remember we were playing in Boston. It was actually in Providence against Boston. And uh, it was before the game started, I was taping my stick out by the ice and Pat Burns comes walking out and he goes, he gets kind of like close to my face, just looking at me. He's always like trying to intimidate and he's like, how do you think you, how do you think your camp's going? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. And, you know, we're getting our lines, getting some points and, you know, me and Jamie and, and Jeff have kind of, you know, built off of what we did last year and, and what, and he just cuts me off and he goes, I fucking hate how you're playing. Oh. And I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like, well, what, what do you mean, Pat? Like, what, 
what can I be doing better? And he goes, I don't give a shit if you ever get a point. He goes, if the other team, if 20 guys on the other team don't want to rip your head off, I've got no use for you. Mm. And for me, I was like, what the, like, okay, I get like that you want more of that, but like, come on, man. Like in, in, and so basically got to the point in New Jersey where I was just getting, he was whipping on me all the time, all the time, all the time. And I eventually went in there one day and I, it took me a lot of guts to do it because Pat was, Pat was a scary, scary dude. Man. Like, yep. and I went in his office and I remember I talked to my parents. I talked to my agent. I was like, I'm, and all of them were like, just, you know, go in there and show him some fire, show him some fire, you know? So I go in his office and I go, Pat, can I talk to you? And he's like, yeah. And I go, I sit down and I'm like, I just want to tell you, it's bullshit the way you treat me. And I'm not going to fucking take it anymore. And he goes, and he sits back in his chair and he goes, really? And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> where's this going? <laughs> and, uh, and then he says to me, and then he starts going in this whole spiel about like, um, I don't know if you want to be a hockey player. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I, I just don't know. I don't know if you, if you really, really want to be a hockey player. And he, and he was uh, um, a Mountie uh, yep. in, yeah. in uh, yep. yeah, Canadian Mountie. Yeah. yeah. So he was like, listen, man, I've got connections in that. I can give you a recommendation. If you want to go do that, you just be an asshole. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm just getting more and more mad. So in the, in the, in there, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, fuck this. Like, you're not going to treat me like this anymore. And I'm like, and if you don't, if, if it doesn't change, then you should trade me. And I, and then we, I left the meeting and I got traded like the next fucking day. <laughs> so I'm like, I didn't really work. So that, that I got traded to Arizona lockout happens. Uh, um, I just kind of play out that year. My, my contracts are, uh, sorry. I, uh, they bring in Gretzky to coach in, in Arizona. Um, and they end up making a trade for Jeff Sanderson, a part of that trade, because they wanted another 20 goal score, and I wasn't that. So Jeff Sanderson comes to Arizona. I go to Columbus. Then I had uh, I had a health issue with my heart that year, so I, that stopped me, and I didn't think I was going to play again. So then I couldn't get a contract. And so um, Lou Lamarillo called, and Lou was, uh, you know, he gave me a second chance and I came back to Jersey, played in Jersey. And it was kind of, you know, once I played in Jersey and, and I had a, you know, limited role there, but I had a great time playing Jersey. That's when I was there with Jannie. And, but then it got to the end there where I'm like, I know, I know I can do more. I need to like, I won't be able to forgive myself in my career if I just didn't put myself in a position to, to do more. And so I got a call as a free agent from Ray Shiro in Pittsburgh. And he was like, uh, you know, we got three centers installed, Crosby and, and Malkin, and we like to rotate those centers through a fourth line. So you'll have probably four minutes, five minutes a night on the fourth line and four or five minutes a night with one of those guys. I'm like, well, that sounds good. So I went there <laughs> and then I, I had two kind of career years and, uh, you know, just, um, sign my deal with the, with the Rangers. And then, um, you know, but the thing with Pat Burns too, I ran into Pat, Pat was unfortunately, I mean, God rest his soul. Like yeah. we know about Pat getting sick. And yeah. I actually reconnected with Pat when I was with the devils the second time. Cause he was scouting for the team and it was during when he was sick and um, he was living down in Florida and I'd run into him down there all the time. And it was so great like to reconnect. And he was so different with me and I was more mature now where I can take, I just wish that I was able to grasp what he was trying to get. He was trying to help me. He wanted me to be like a, like uh basically like today's modern tom wilson yeah, right like yeah. he wanted me to be that and i was too much thinking like oh you don't want me to play you don't want me to do this and that's not like i can play and i you know we had a great relationship there where um i was ready to hear it and um he was he was great with me but then so i was in new york and uh you know playing there and um yeah i just uh it got to a point there in new york i was dinged up uh, with my knee, I had knee surgery when I signed there and I, I was basically playing on one leg for the rest of my, I was playing out my rest of my career. And, um, I just wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to, I wanted to go somewhere else and, uh, I wanted to play with my buddies and just kind of have fun. <laughs> so yeah. I got, tra I got traded to Minnesota. I got to play with my buddy, Zach Parisi and, um, you know, just went there and it was a, it was a unique two years. I didn't play very much, but I had the time of my life.
I was like, you know, I was, a, it was a, it was a place. I was an older guy. So I was looked at inside the locker room and, uh, it was just, it was fun. I had a blast my last two years. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of why I that's when you caught Oshi. That's when you caught oh, Oshi and you got that yeah. suspension, that yeah. rapper. <laughs> that was that was bullshit. That was my last NHL game. How about that? Oh my god! I ended my NHL career on a suspension. Really? Yeah. What'd so, you do to him? He got the elbow up. Was I wasn't on that team? Oh, right don't no. give me that shit. <laughs> What'd you do, Ruppy? <laughs> I didn't get an elbow up on him. No, I'm okay, oh, hey, Jenny. I'm covering my point, man, in the defensive zone, right, left winger, and Oshie's cu- cutting up the wall, and he's cutting up up the wall, and he's going to cut the seam top of the circle. He's got his head down, and I'm thinking to myself. Dude, is this guy going to walk right into me? And I, I, I take one step to the side, elbows glued to my side, and I go to hit him. And, uh, you know, I, I hit him. It's, it was one of those hits where I, it was a clean hit, but because of my size, my shoulder did yeah. hit him in the chin. Mm-hmm. It, it did. So <laughs> that's, that what, that's, not... that, that's Pronger's excuse. Yeah. I'm too, <laughs> I'm too tall. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's why I got a penalty for being too tall. So I hit him, and then, uh, you know, I got, obviously got suspended. But it was funny because I was working with the NHL Network after the uh, – I did uh, – they, they had the kid show, Ice Time. Uh, they have it, Ice Time, and I worked on it for a couple of years. And I was in Washington, and I was doing it with, with Oshi. And uh, it was a one-on-one, like kind of talking about his breakaways and – or sorry, shootout and how he learned all this stuff. And he was actually really interesting to, to hear how he learned all of his moves. But – um. He, uh, we were talking beforehand and I said something to him about it and, or he mentioned it too. Like just, I just want to get out of the way right away. And I talked to him after that and I, you know, I reached out to him and, and got his number from Zach, um, Parisi, who's friends with him. And yeah. I was like, dude, I didn't like, I, you know, you don't feel good. I, I try to hit guys hard and you want to ding guys up, but you don't want to like hurt them. And, and I, like he was out for a little bit. So I, I, I didn't love that obviously. And uh, so I started talking to him and he's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's all good. He's like, I should have had, he goes, my head was down. I'm like, fucking right. Someone finally admitted your head was down. <laughs> but, but yeah, so that was, uh, you know, not the way you wanted it to end. No, but it's I can't good. believe that was your last game, man. That's I crazy. Saw. Hey, what's the story? Like you were, you were drafted ninth overall by the Islanders, but you never signed with the Islanders. Like what, what's that story all about? Yeah. So I had, um, so I got drafted uh, ninth overall is, and it was, I was, I was rated to go like mid to late first round. So obviously that's much earlier than where I was rated to go. And Mike Milbury was the GM of the Islanders. And uh, so I got drafted there and, and you got two years to sign um, with the team. And so I went back to the OHL and I was playing in Erie for the Otters at the time. And um, my agent always told me that I'd probably be a kind of an 11th hour signing. So just be patient. Like it's nothing you need to worry about right now. So the season was over and I think I had to sign by June 1st. And, um, so it's right at the end of May and, uh, it's actually the day before. Um, and there's some talking back and forth and, and they make an offer. And remember at that, that time, the contracts are strict, were structured differently where the salary was pretty much set, but the signing bonus is oh, where yeah. guys made their monies, their, sure. their money at, right? So million, million dollar signing bonuses for top. Yeah. Picks, so yeah. like first round picks, um, I'm going to drink water here. So first round picks, t- uh, top 10 picks generally were getting over a million dollars in, in signing bonus. Yeah. Right. And so my offer comes in, it's like, I think it was like, I don't know, 350 grand or something. And from the so, Islanders, of course. Of course. <laughs> From the Islanders, yeah. And so I'm like, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, I don't know. What do I do? I take it. I mean, I don't really have much of a choice, do I? I mean, it's 350 grand more than I have right now. So <laughs> maybe I should just take this. And I don't know. My agent at the time, I'll, I won't say his name, but he was like, well, I'm just letting you know that if you sign that, that's that'll be the lowest. That would be the lowest signing top 10 pick in NHL history that doesn't make you feel very good. Right. So I'm like, all right, I guess I won't, you know, he's basically advising me not to. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he went back to Mike Milbury and he, I think he tried to play a little hardball and he just said, this was literally at, it like 10, 10 o'clock in the evening. And at midnight is when is the deadline. And he says, uh, if that's all you're willing to offer, Mike, then be prepared to let him go back in the draft. And I guess Milbury hung up on him. 
he was pissed. And then, so he called back and my dad, I was talking to my dad. I'm like, well, what do we do now? And so we're kind of waiting out. And my dad's like, you know, we kind of came to the conclusion, like, let's call him back and let's see if we can get, you know, I, like I'll sign that, like, but maybe we can get a little bit more. And he was calling Milbury back and he was, he didn't pick up his phone. He wouldn't answer us. So he, oh he ignored, God. he ignored the phone calls till after the deadline. And, uh, wow. so then I woke up the next morning I'm like, did I make a huge mistake or what? And, uh, I end up like 26 days later, there was the NHL draft again. And I wasn't very excited this time around because I didn't really know what the heck was going to happen. And I got drafted by the devils in the third round. And it was actually the best thing for me because they took their time and I was, I was a project. I needed time. <laughs> and then I, I played in Albany for two and a half years. So it ended up working out fine, but it's one of those weird cause not too many guys kind of go that route. Okay. So you didn't want to say your agent's name. I'm just curious though. Like, did you have the same agent your entire career? Like, wasn't Alan Walsh your agent? Was he the guy who yeah. negotiated? No, I, <laughs> okay. I fired, I, I fired this guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had, uh, I had Alan, Alan Walsh was, I'll tell you this much about Alan. Yeah. He, he's like family to me. Was he like, your, was he your agent at the time when you were dealing with Milbury or you had a different guy? No, 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 no. Okay. He was not. Okay. No, he was not. Was he, I didn't Scott? have Alan. Yes. I, Scott Norton. Yeah. Yeah. It's Scott Norton. Um, so Scott Norton was the one he was, he was the first agent to ever approach me. I was like 15 yeah, me playing. Too. Yep. Yeah. And that? he came yeah, up in like a tournament in Canada. And it was like the first agent came up to me and he was always like a good kind of advisor for the family. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Oh geez, I almost walked myself into who my other agent was. But anyways, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, so, but I, I, you know, I went with more of a proven, uh, not approving. That's the wrong way of putting it. Because Scott was a very good That's agent, great, but like yeah. it was, it was somebody that had more people, I guess. You know what I mean? I gotcha. And I, I was gotcha. kind of, I was kind of wooed a little bit, and uh, so I did that. And then, um, you know, we, uh, I was with Scott for a while, and then, and then I eventually got to the point where um, this is kind of funny. So when I signed, when I came back to the Devils the second time, and uh, I played, I only signed a one-year deal, two-way deal. And I remember going into camp and that was when Lou was giving me my second chance after my, my health issue out of Columbus. And it was me, Dan Lacator, and who's another, uh, there's another guy that was very similar to, to, to us Jason two. Jason Weimer. I, yeah, Rasmussen. I don't remember. Who, no, the guy didn't make it on, on the team. I don't remember who it was. And those guys were on the team. There's three of us. And Lou called us in and he goes, it was the weirdest meeting. Like we're three of us are sitting there next to each other. And he goes, uh, I, I signed y'all. I brought all three of you guys in here. You guys are all on two way deals. One of you is going to make the team. And I'm like, Holy shit. Like, what do we just fight each other right now? Or what? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you know, like, yeah. uh, so, uh, I ended up making the team and I was, you know, Lou was good to me. I stayed up the whole year. I didn't get sent down. So then my contract was up. So I know that like, I want a one way. And I know it's going to be at league minimum. So I was like, what do I need an agent for? I don't need to pay an agent 20 grand mm -hmm. when I know I'm going to be making 400 this year. Yep. Like, they, yeah, it's like, so it was tough because Scott was really good, but I, you know, he was good with it. And, and so I, I represented myself with, with Lou for that contract. And, uh, that wasn't really a good idea because like, so I went in there and I'm talking to Lou and he offers me, he, I mean, he was good. I didn't say it's not a good deal. He offered me a, a two year deal, a one way deal. So that was great. But my thing I said to him, as I said, Lou, I know I can do more in this league. I don't care what you pay me. You could pay me whatever you want to pay me. Just, just promise me that I'm going to get more of a, sh a shot, more playing time. And he goes, I, I have no doubt that you'll earn more playing time. So he's like, he's, he's like wording it. Like you'll learn more. Yeah, no, I know. I know I have to earn it, but I just want like a, a gentleman's like agreement that, you know, you can pay me what you want and, um, that I'm going to play more. So he goes, all right. And then he offered me league minimum. And I was like, really? Like, I thought maybe like just a little bit more. So he offered me league minimum and I go, really? like, I didn't, I didn't have an agent come in here and try to do whatever. I'm like, I, you know, can you give me a little bit more? I can't, I can't, I can't hung up the phone with him. And I remember I, th I threw the phone across the room, smashed it against the wall. I was so mad. I'm like, why did I do this? You know what I mean? Like I, I you know, I, I thought that, you know, whatever and the phone rings back like three minutes later and it, it still worked. The phone still, still worked. You didn't throw it that hard. Then you got a week. No. 
<laughs> it was hey, this is back in the day. This is the landline yeah. guys. We got like yeah. we had like four landlines in the house. <laughs> I don't even know if we had a I don't even know if we had a cell phone then. <laughs> and uh so uh so they call back and it's assist, assistance like Lou wants to talk to you. I'm Marie. Like, I'm like, yeah, Marie calls and she's like, Lou wants to talk to you. I'm like, so Lou gets on and he goes, Michael, he goes, I didn't like how that conversation ended. He goes, uh, he gave me like 50 grand more a year. So I was like, I'm like, oh boy, Lou, like, I, you know, it, it was yeah. good, but Samurai. you know, I was like, so, Hey, maybe I'm the one guy who uh, pulled on the heartstrings of Lou Lamarillo and got my way, but uh, <laughs> he gave me a little bit more, more money. So that was good. What, what do you think of him as a whole? I mean, like I love, I, you know, like for, for a guy like me too, just like you said, going to the devils was like the best thing for you. Certainly was for me, but like, what do you, what do you, how do you take, you think of Lou Lamarillo? Like, what do you, what do you think of? Um, I'd, I'd view him a lot <clears throat> like I viewed Pat Burns, where early on, I, I didn't appreciate him. I didn't like him. Um, I was things I disagreed with. And, but I think that's because I was young. And when I got older, and I started seeing what he did. I mean, I, I, he gave me my chance to play in the NHL. He developed me in the minors. Like I owe a lot to Lou Amarillo. Yep. And so it, it's just one of those things. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I, there's many days where I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I can't, st- I can't stand the like this, this or that and whatever. But when you get older and you start looking back at things, you, you see it differently. This guy was great for me. I had a, uh, you know, I had a. I had a bit of an issue when I was in New York when we were playing against the devils where I, I, I pushed Marty in uh, oh, yeah. the Eastern conference finals. And from <laughs> then on, from then on, I'll, I'll say this when I was uh, that, when I got done playing the NHL network, the the devils were doing like a season ticket, uh, like a drive or something at the arena. And they wanted someone to come MC the event. Everyone, any, was, anyone but Rupper <laughs> can come. Yeah. So listen, so listen to this. <laughs> They wanted, they had different things going on at the Prudential Center. Like, okay, over here is going to be this, over here is going to be that. And they need like two or three um, hosts slash analysts to come and, and do these things. So the network um, asked me, uh, are you available on the stage? I'm like, and for the Devils. I'm like, yeah, that, that works. And so I have it written in the calendar and it gets really close. It's like two days before I get a, a message that says that uh, I'm no longer needed at the event. And I'm like, that's weird. And so they said, oh, the, we're downsizing the event. So I. Uh, Meaning they want somebody I, like yeah. six foot yeah. two instead yes. of six foot yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I reached out to the other guys that were going to go and MC or host it, and they're still going. So I'm like, dude, this guy just blocked me out. Like, is he upset about this Marty thing still? Or like, I don't understand what happened. So I, I'm pretty sure that Lou was like, not ready. Like, it was like, not after that. that I think he didn't, I don't know. I might be wrong. Maybe it was some other reason, but I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't really, wasn't really associated with the devils there for a little bit. And then, um, you know, I reconnected with them and it felt really good to do that. And, uh, he was awesome. And so I think that that's all, you know, I've talked to him a couple of times. I was actually last summer, um, was going to go to lunch with them and then something got messed up with my schedule and I couldn't do it. And I just want to, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate him. He was, he, I mean, I, I have a, I have a Stanley cup ring because of that yeah. guy. You were, you, know da- you I mean? were downsizing. That's yeah. why you didn't go to lunch. Yeah, with them. yeah exactly. <laughs> they didn't want so, nothing but, to do with you there. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, Lou's Lou's Lou. Like Lou is like, man, he's he's a scary dude. And but then you also know, and one of the things that was really good for me is when he came down behind the bench when when Claude Julian got fired, yeah. he came behind the bench, and it was like this guy was the most supportive coach I think I ever had. So it's like you oh, know, he, oh, I love Lou. That. Yeah, yeah, Lou. Uh, yeah, but then you get to you see all the frauds though, eh, Jenny? All the guys who bitch and complain all the time about. You and I not giving them the puck. All of a sudden, lose be behind the bench. You're like, good shift, Rupper. Good shift, <laughs> yes. Jerry. Like, oh, yeah. oh I love that. Oh, yeah. now, hey, listen, we, we love right all there. the lose story. I mean, we've had so many people who have come on here, and they they let all have this, you know, their own relationship with let me them. Let me ask you this, because I remember being young. You were pretty young, <clears throat> although established young. But when Claude Julian got fired, like, I never understood it. We were kicking ass, dude. We haven't lost a game. I think we were, like, 
We're, we're in first place. We're in first place. We're, we're smoking everybody. And I knew Johnny Madden had a kind of like a little thing with him where yeah. he shot a buck at him. We, what asked, the, we asked Lou about this when he came on with us, what, too. He didn't really give us He didn't give answer, us an answer. You know? what, what the fuck happened there? So, Jenny, I'm, I might be mistaken, but I think you, we called you up that year, right? Yes. Okay, because I don't think you, did you make the team out of camp no, that year? No, because they had Oliwa and Langdon, and then I got sent down, then I got called back up in November, played a couple games, and then, okay. he, then he called me up for this, the winter um, stoppage, and I got, I was, I never looked back after that, which is kind of cool. So, so I, I don't think I've ever told this before, uh, the, uh, Claude Julian was one of the nicest men oh, that man. you could be around. Yep. He was awesome. Uh, but I will say this in training camp, you know, this is a devil's team that, that has won, you know, they were one of those franchises like Detroit, like they, you won, they've won cops. There's guys on that team that have won multiple dynasty. Cups. Yeah. And, uh, so he came in in training camp and he, the day after camp ended, we had our group together that that made the made the team or whatever and he goes in front of the room and um you know completely reasonable thing to say he was like all right guys you know this is uh we understand that things have been done a certain way here and there's been success but we're going to tweak a couple things and, and this is what i believe in and whatever and he has every right to do it. he's a coach and uh it, there was some pushback in that meeting from players not like pushback like anything severely but just kind of like questioning i remember one player distinctively that got up walked to the front of the room and put his hand out for the for the marker and and claude gave him the marker and he said well this is this is what we think will probably work better and the player starts drawing the board and i'm like holy shit, what's going on here and nothing was done about it so i think from that day forward the players knew that they ran the room. Mm. And so it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good thing long-term because we couldn't get squeezed by our coach anymore. You know what I mean? And so we were in first place at the end of the season and like think that that's like Lou being a jerk or Lou being whatever. It legitimately was the right thing to do. And because there's going to be a point in the playoffs and we're going to see it now in the playoffs or you're going to have to push buttons. You're going to have to make tough decisions. You you can't have, you've got to, you've got to have a, a very alpha dog coach yeah. in the room. And at that moment, for whatever reason, and it clearly worked out. And that's not Claude Julian as a coach. Cause he went and won a cup and he's had an unbelievable career. And I can't believe he's not coaching right now. Um, it, it, it was just that moment where I, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just a, it was just kind of like a, it, it it put a break in our team and we did it all year. Mm. And I think it got to the point where we're going into the playoffs. Like, this was before, it was before the last game of the season, I, I think. And we we're in first place wow. and then they did that. So I, I think it was, in my opinion, I'm, other people might disagree. It was, it was the right move to make because we need someone to squeeze us. And with, with Lou coming down, like, uh, mm. yeah, I think that squeezes you pretty good. All right. A couple more things for you, man. And, th- and then we'll let you go, man. I definitely appreciate your time. Yeah. Get back to what you were saying. Alan Walsh is your age. Like you like Alan. I mean, I know he's loud on Twitter and, and like, he's like anti yeah. Batman and all that. Does that ever make you uncomfortable with some of the stuff that he says or like, what should we know about Alan Walsh? Like I know him pretty well. He gets mad at me a lot, but, <laughs> but I've known him for, for years at the same time. And I, for the most part, I've had a good relationship with him. He's, he's not happy with me now, but still like, like what's your <laughs> what should we know about Alan Walsh that maybe people don't recognize or know for themselves? Yeah, okay. So first of all, like, do I agree with everything Alan says? No, I don't. Like, and and we get into conversations about that all the time. There's many things I won't get into all of them. But there's many things that him and I disagree with. And but the thing I love about him is that we can argue about it and, and move on from it. But first and foremost, when this guy though. And he was singly the best thing for me in my career is he's an advocate for players. His like, so this is the, the thing. And I know a lot of people in the social media world, cause Alan kind of goes at the league a lot. Um, they, they position it like, you know, there's, there's two sides to this. Well, yeah, they both work. There, there's a lot of similarities between the two that, Alan's job is to advocate for the players, 
to earn as much money as he can for the players, to watch out for the players in every which way, shape, or form. And he does it. I think he's the best in the business at doing it. Gary's job is to be an advocate for the owners Mm -hmm. and to battle for them, to make as much money for them and the league revenue as possible. They're doing their jobs. They both do their jobs very well. And for them both to do their jobs very well, there's going to be a conflict of interest because it's, you know what I mean? Like they're already set up just with this, the nature of their jobs to have a different views on things. So, you know, I'm not one where I actually think there's a lot of things that Gary has done that has been incredible for our game, incredible for our game and they've grown our game. And, you know, I think Alan is the best agent in the business. Those things are like water and oil though. Like they're not, they're not going to mesh all the time. And, and Alan kind of makes that pretty, pretty obvious times, but he's, he's unbelievable. I mean, the, 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 what he's done and for me being like a role-playing guy, he had a lot of big name guys. He still does in the league. He, I, he, I would talk to this guy at three in the morning after a road trip, um, complaining, venting to him. Uh, he's given me life direction. I mean, he's been incredible. Like that'll be, this guy will be a part of my life for the rest of my life. And uh, he's incredible. So, but yeah, I mean, Alan's Alan. I mean, Hey, put it this way. He's a guy that'll rip someone's face off for you. I want him on my team. And he's on my team, and like I love that. I love having the the support of this guy. Hey, listen, okay, that's a good answer. I get you. I mean, and he's your agent, whatever. So that that's and you you know him, you know way better than most people do. Um, so for you to have that opinion says something. All right, did did Yager ever say anything to you on the ice when you did the salute? I'm just curious <laughs> if he ever like said anything, or was it just Scotty Hartnell? No, so Yager's actually pulled his groin in that game, so he didn't play the rest of the game. So okay. he was on the ice, he was on the bench, yeah. and uh, you know, in that game. It ended up working kind of what I did because literally we're in this game and it was a, it was a great ending to the game and everybody on their team was just, they weren't even, I don't even know if they cared about winning the game. They just wanted to kill me. So maybe they, hey, that was, that, that would have made Pat Burns, <laughs> that would have made Pat Burns smile. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, it would have come full circle. But uh, <laughs> so I remember going out there for, and, and line up for a face off and like Claude Giroux is in the offensive zone, taking the draw. And he's standing there and screaming across the dot at me, you piece of, you know, he's a Hall of Famer and you're going to disrespect him. And I'm like, dude, th- we got these guys right where we want them. You know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. their best player is like yelling at me and they're down by one goal here. Were like, you yeah, mocking like, Yager? Is that what you were doing? Like yeah. with the salute? I mean, like, just was. It, that was that in your head? Like, like, how do you do that on the spur of the moment? Or did you plan that ahead of the game? Like saying, hey, if I score winter classic, big stage, <laughs> national TV, I'm going to do the Yager salute if I score. <laughs> Well, yeah, everyone always asks that, but I, I didn't score enough to to be able to predict that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I very well could have gone 25 games without a goal. So I didn't know I was scoring in the Winter Classic. Uh, no, I went into the uh, uh, the truth of it is all is that uh, I'm trying to make this short because I know I'm very long long winded sometimes. Like I I'm, I uh, I was in. I wanted to resign in Pittsburgh. That was when Yager was finishing up his time in the KHL. Remember, he was going to come back to the NHL. Mm-hmm. And the UFAs we had in Pittsburgh were Pascal Dupuis, Tyler Kennedy, and myself. And that's like the order of importance of signing. It was Dupuis, Kennedy, then me. So Yager starts saying that he wants to come back to Pittsburgh, you know, kind of come full circle. He wants to win a cup. He wants to make things right with Mario. And so once his name came up and he had an interview period with teams before July 1st. So he kind of had a head start. So now all of a sudden I got Yager in the mix now too in front of me. And all I really want to do is stay in Pittsburgh. And that's like home for me. And and that's where I wanted to play. And uh, so Yogs comes in, everything he's saying, all those things he keeps, I want to, it's not about the money. It's about winning again. And, you know, I want to, you know, go back to where my career started. And then he turns, turns around and, and signs with the, and it's his, his prerogative. He signs with the highest bidder, which was Philly. And, but what ended up happening by that is, he drug it along to a point where I was not able to talk my contract fully <laughs> because they're waiting on him. And I felt like he was, I felt like he was playing games to get more money mm-hmm. and he's using the penguins to do that. So I'm like, you know, this guy's contract messed up mine. So I'm like, screw this guy, you know? 
and so I kind of had like this thing. I'm like, I'm going to get, I remember saying like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to catch him one of these times this year. And I didn't get an opportunity to do that. So I just kind of had it in the back of my mind that like, I wanted to get Yager at some point, just hit him with, get him with a hit or something. And, uh, so, uh, you know, in that game, no, I didn't think about it before the shift, anytime before the game, I didn't think of anything, I, but I did know. And I, what I learned over my career is I learned how to be a bad guy and be a heel a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I really liked it. And I got the same feelings with that as I did when I'd score a goal, you know, it was like a rush you get. And Jenny knows like how it, it's like, Hey man, I love, like, I love going in Montreal and laying someone out with a hit and getting booed. Like that was just as big for me as getting cheered for scoring a goal at home. So I scored that goal. We're in Philly. We're down to nothing. I scored the goal and it was more or less me just like in that moment, I don't know why it popped in my head. I, it was just like, I remember literally under my breath when I did the Yager salute, just being like, when I put my hand up to my head, I was like, fuck you. And I did that, <laughs> like, did that to like towards their bench and towards the crowd. And uh, so, you know, everybody lost their minds there. Um, you know, I ended up having to fight Jody Shelley later on the next time we played them. It's like, you know, well, you the, called him irrelevant, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I, so Jody, so I, I kind of, you know, I kind of dug my own hole with those. Jody beat me up later in the season. And, uh, you know, that was that. And then um, it was funny because I was working the All Star game for NHL Network when it was in LA. And that was the year Yager was in Florida and he made it to the All Star game. And I was walking through the hotel with uh, Tony Luffman, who I work with. Mm-hmm. And he, um, he's got no energy, by the way. <laughs> Is he a low energy guy? <laughs> he's an awesome, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's the best. All, man. Always high energy. Though. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, so I'm walking to the elevator with him. And all of a sudden, like coming from another um, way to the elevator, Yager comes walking by with somebody that he's with, and they walk into the elevator. So I put my arm out to Tony. And I'm like, hey, let's just wait. I don't feel like being in an elevator with this guy. <laughs> and uh, so I, I just didn't want to like, you know, because I know that like I, I probably have to say something. I didn't want to. Oh say yeah. That. So, uh, so he goes up the elevator, and I brought my daughter uh, trip with me. It was like a father daughter trip, and I was going to take her to Disneyland that day because we had some time off, and that's when up to get Maddie and go rent a car and go to Disneyland for the day. So I think that that moment has passed as far as with Yager. I go up. I get Maddie. We go. Uh, the only rental car place is like a mile outside LA, two miles outside LA. I get in a, I get in like an Uber. We go two miles out. It's like this mom and pop rental car place, and out in California, we're gonna rent a cool car and go over. So we're like, went to this like exotic car rental place. Like it was like a small. It looked like they had like 15 cars. Mm-hmm. So we go walking in this place. My daughter and I walk in. Sure as shit. Yogs is sitting in the chair right there renting the car. I'm like, son of a bitch. So like you walk in, it's like a little bell on the door, like Ting, when you walk in. And then all of a sudden Yogs turns and looks at me. I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, oh, hey, Yogs. And he's like, hey, Rupert, how are you? I'm like, good. And then he just kind of goes about his business. I'm standing in the background with my daughter and I'm like, hey, I go to Maddie. I'm like, hold on a second. So I go up to him like, hey, and uh, I'm like, man, listen, like, you may not even thought twice about this. And, and to be frank, like the way I'm saying this, it did kind of bother me that I did it, but I don't regret it at all. Cause that's what I, you know, whatever. But it was like, I just didn't want him to, it wasn't like Yager's one of the greatest players player ever play our game. Right. Like, are you kidding me? Like, but at the same time, I don't, I, nobody is above anybody. For, if I need to do something to help my team win, yeah. I don't give a shit. I push my, I'll push Marty Bredor. Marty Bredor won me. I'm going to push him to try to get a spark for my Ranger team. Like mm-hmm. that, that's my job. Did you text Marty after that game or no? Yeah. Uh, no, not after the game. It, like a couple years later, uh, <laughs> at the, it, when you ran into him at a, years later. you ran into him at a car rental place. And <laughs> yeah. <you> said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly, the enterprise probably for Marty, right? Oh, he's doing the commercials, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, no, I talked to Marty about it later on, and uh, he was totally cool. We had a couple beers and talked about he it. It was, it was great. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was awesome. I love Marty, and yeah. that's a whole other conversation. He's, a, he's one of the most, like, humble superstars I was, I've was i been around. Uh, so, so anyways, uh, so I said to Yogs, I'm like, hey, man, like, this is not, like, you might not have thought about it, but the Winter Classic, like, that wasn't really – I was just trying, you know, I'm trying to like little fuck you to like, you know, I'm on the Rangers, you're on the Flyers. 
And he goes, oh, no, no, don't worry about it, man. It's nothing. I go, yeah, so it's not disrespect, man. I'm like, I got nothing but respect and love for what you've done in this game. Are you kidding me? I'm like, but at the same time, like, my job in this league was to be annoying. And that's what I was trying to be. And go. he goes, no, no. He goes, it's all good. I'm like, all right, cool. And then he, then he turns to me and he goes, um, hey, I just want to let you know, I really love watching on, on TV. You do a really great job. I'm like, oh, shit, this guy's really nice. I'm like, oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. I'm like, thank you. And uh, he goes, yeah, he's like, you're way better at this than you were a hockey player. Oh. And, I'm like, and I go, fuck you. I'm like, ah, we're just laughing. I'm like, all right, buddy, it's 1-1. One, one. We're yeah. even. Yeah. We're done now, right? And then you gave him the was, salute when you got into yeah. your exotic car and drove he was off. Actually, he was actually really cool about it. Yeah, he's cool, man. Hey, he's hey listen. Um, all right, one minute. I, I want to go through a couple of these things. This for the because this is going to come out t- tomorrow. First yeah. round series is starting. Just give me who you who you like in these series. Yeah, okay? give me something. Roughly. Give me something. Okay, we got Florida one. Do you want to know who my final pick is? Yeah, what who, do you got? Who is it? Who is that's it? St. Louis Blues versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, that's who I oh, have shit. too. That's who I have too. I've got I've got Florida losing in the second round. Yeah, to Tampa. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I, I think Tampa. I think Tampa wins again. I really do. Yeah. I just don't. I have too many questions about some other teams that are. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I actually thought the first round was at first. I was thinking there was going to be a lot of upsets in the first round, mm-hmm. and. I don't really think there is going to be any more. Like the only ones I really I see you. is well, I guess, I mean, could, yeah, could, I mean, could yeah, LA, could LA, like, could LA beat Edmonton or no? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, Not without their, Mike Smith would just hurt, have to, yeah. Mike Smith would have to be very, very average. Well, that's possible. And he's been looking really good. Yeah, no, I know, <laughs> but he's, he's been looking good, he's but yeah, good no, recently, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some, there's some sleepers out there. Uh, but I know. I just, I just still think the lightning are the best team out there. What about Calgary? Aren't they big, fast, tough? Like, they kind of have everything a little I bit. Know. I, don't know. I, I watched still... them the other night, man. I don't know. They, they, they got some high-end players. Rupert, not to answer it for you. but yeah, Well, you are you answering know. it for him. But after after that, do they have enough? Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't, don't love Calgary. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, my favorite player in the league is Matthew Kachuk. Same I mean, I love that dude. So, like, uh, but, you know, I, I still <sighs> – What's Johnny Gaudreau going to look like? I don't know. I agree. That's you're, you're taking the words know. out of my mind. I get you on Exa- that. I watched him the other night against Minnesota, and I'm like, you know, like, okay, listen, he carries, he transports the puck to the neutral zone, he makes plays, but smothered. then when he's got a battle along the wall yeah, or dig Eddie. a puck out of the corner, like he just he doesn't like that. I yeah, it's not know. his. Yeah. He's not coming out with it. You know, like that's not. Well, you like Mitchie Marnie too, but he's gonna yeah, do the same I shit. I know. I know. The only know. the only thing I think that is Mitchie. different this time around, maybe with Johnny, and I love Johnny, but yeah. he's struggle. He's been struggling in the playoffs. Yeah. Is I think Elias Lindholm for oh, me he's should so good. He, he should win the Selkie, which I don't know if he will, but he he is that good, and and you know, and Kachuk is. Maybe the difference. Maybe Kachuk can be that lightning yeah, yeah. rod mm-hmm. where people, again, people are going to want to kill Matthew Kachuk so much yep. that they're not going to focus on Johnny Kachuk. Hey, a video that's surfaced. Why players like that are so good in this league. So you need good. lightning rod guys yeah. to, like, you yeah. need players to come. Yeah. And that's like Tom Wilson. Like, yep. when you play against Washington, mm-hmm. it's like, heads up, 43, yep. heads yep. up here. We want to get that guy. We want to get that. Well, guess who's, guess who's not getting attention? Mm-hmm. Ovi. Yeah, and that's yeah, how they is. fucking beat you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I you know, you, a, a video surfaced today of Big Walt running Dominic Hoshik, like in the first game of a playoff <laughs> series. And I could just see Matthew seeing this video and being like, and being like, and being like, I'm going to do that in the oh, first game of the playoffs. It. I would, I would love it. Hey, I got two things. I got two things I want to, yeah. and I'm, you're, you're talking me down that with the Kachuk family. Uh, did you see the other video that surfaced? Brady looks oh. like he's having a good time. Oh, he's having and a good time. And he should. <laughs> and it's a second video in like a month of yeah. him like doing yeah. karaoke and yeah. shit. Good. Let him do his yeah. thing. He works yeah, his ass off. Yeah. He's doing some bartending. He looks, he looks okay. good, man. Oh, yeah. Enjoy it. I love that kid too. So mm-hmm. bye. Oh. Another one. I want your guys' input on this. One of my favorite guys to watch this year. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite guys. This is such a cool move too by, by this guy. And I've been pumping him all year long. Tanner Janot. Oh, I love oh yeah, we love that guy. Too. I love him, love him, love him. Oh, yeah. And I, the other day, I got a, um, I got a package at the network, and I opened the package, and it's a Tanner Janot jersey, 
and he signed it on there. Thanks for the love. I'm like, fucking right. Wow. I love this guy more now. Like, that's pretty we sick, right? We don't, we don't oh, wait, get wait, wait, shit. Wait, wait, wait. We, we don't get shit fucking... from Tanner Janot. He throws hard heat, dude. He'll hit you. And he score. penalty kills. He's out the end. Maybe you tweeted that out. He's out at the end of the goddamn games. Mm-hmm. He's doing this. He's doing that. Hey, he's you know in what? all the most important positions, and he's tougher than and, shit. And we know, listen, yeah. I know that Luke Cunning kid, like, for, since, he was, since he was younger, yeah, I asked Luke-y him, boy. you know, like, privately, hey, wait, what, do the boys like him? What's what's the story with Tanner Janot? He goes, we fucking love him. Yes. He's the Love best. Yep. Like how think about that. Like from the standpoint, I know he's not like an 18 or 19 year old rookie, but like think about like a rookie. Oh, I know that team's tough. They had over mm-hmm. 60 majors this year, most of the NHL, oh, yeah. but that kid think about like, I, I like, listen, I'm not just saying it cause Janny's here too, but like when Janny came to the devils and you have a young guy that doesn't get lay shit of anything like that makes everybody on the team like not give a shit about it. And anything. you score 24, 25 goals. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So when you have a young guy that's going out there and he's like, Janny didn't like, do no, that. Man, Shut up, Andy. No one's doing this. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, it's, man. yeah. Yeah. Maybe minus the 25 goals. Well, yeah, whatever. Right. We had, we had, we had star, star power on the f- first three lines. It doesn't matter. I don't, yeah. How does he not win the Calder? I can't believe this is even like a discussion. Like I know I, I, Michael Bunting or whatever, not, but he's like not 30. getting enough. He's not getting enough love in that area. Cause he, didn't he, didn't he end up finishing first and goals? That, it, among right rookies, there. yeah, and Bunting got hurt yeah. down the stretch. So, and yeah, so and he, I don't know. And he's I, not playing he with Matthews and Marner either. No so, shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. So. I agree. Hey, man, keep up the great Ruppie, work. We love you, dude. You're awesome. All right, thanks, guys. I You're appreciate it. Go, and, uh, go. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get you guys a if it, our predictions go right and the Blues go to the finals. We might get you guys on that hockey talk and get on talk some Blues talk Let's in the playoffs it. here. Let's do You're it. Ready, so. homeboy. Keep doing your thing, dude. Love you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Right on, Robert. Take care, man. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. And get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was uh, Mike Rupp, Rupper. Cam, put your damn headphones on and get your mic I going. I got you, homie. Okay. God damn. You I ever, fought him a shit You ever time. late to practice? Never. Late to games? Do I? Do late I, on the ice? Never, never, you know, never, ever. Even if I stayed up all night partying. Mm-hmm. That, like, I had booze. No. Party hardcore. Mm-hmm. And my mind You're was the so, last one there. No, I just, like, didn't sleep all night, and I got to regroup, like, ah, smack yourself in the face. Get up, Cam. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck to practice before everybody and stretch. And I do that, and I drink Pedialyte, like, blah, blah, blah. Then I go to Ray Barilli and take a bunch of Z-Packs, just in case, just in case, mm-hmm. just in case. Mm-hmm. Crush the Z-Packs, get hydrated, figure it the fuck out. No one had any idea I didn't sleep. A Z-Pack? Zithromax. You crush that? Oh, God, yeah. What is it, like a pill? Yeah, Andy, it's a pill. It's a pill that takes all the bacteria on your wee wee, mm-hmm. and it uh, it, uh, it takes it it, uh, it, it, it it takes into the ether yeah. and it goes away. Well, Rupert, I, I've heard him tell a story one time how he was uh, late to the rink. He got stuck in New York City traffic, and well, I kind of talked to him about that's it. That's on you. No, he left like several hours. I don't on give time. a fuck. And so he ran to MSG, thirty five blocks away. That's what you do. I remember and he was sweating his ass I remember, off when he got there. I'll give you an example. One time, I got stuck in New York City. Christoph Oliwal left me down there. God. Was this recently? Fuck no. I was 20 oh, years you old. You told the story. Cause you just ran yeah. into him. And you, you no, 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 no. I was in training camp with him, and I went to eat at his house, and we took a cab yeah. all the way no, to fucking New York. you told that story because you did, well, you did just see him, though, right? Yeah, just yeah. saw him. Yeah. And so uh, he left me down there. I was 20. I met a girl, went to a gay bar with a girl, had a lovely time. No, I could say that. Mm. Went, she took me to a gay bar. and knew a bunch of people there. Hot chick. I went in there. I was the king of the ball there. Oh, they all knew who you oh, were. No, no, they had no idea who I was. I was twenty years old. I didn't even make the team yet. But I was. They're like, "There's Cam." I was not. Everybody was so sweet to me. I felt like, I felt like good because they're kind of hitting on me too. And I'm like, "God damn right, I must be kind of sexy." Plus, I had a good looking chick next to me. So I went to her house. I puked on her bed, which is oh not. Oh my god, Andy! Cam, very, I know you are so embarrassed. Such a hoosier. Right now. I'm such a fucking hoosier. I've, you pu- have you on, ever no, puked on no, somebody else's no, bed no, ever no, before? No, no, no. I took a couple things that night, and I think that it got me. It, what it, kind of things? Uh, okay. well, you know, well, they were hand, can you tell Hey, us? they were handing me things at the gay oh, bar, yeah, and I'm like, "What's up?" <laughs> and I ate them all, and I got fucked up, and I puked, and I puked on her bed. And then I had to get a cab, and it was. 
six thirty, seven, seven o'clock in the morning. We had mm-hmm. nine o'clock practice. I couldn't get. I had my. Oh, same, and you were late to practice. I had my suit on still from the night before. Oh, but you didn't take it off when you were in bed with the girl. I mean, you, didn't, you slept with it. Oh on. yeah, I took it off and I puked and everywhere. And I put it back on. I slept on a chair. Slept with your suit. She was on. not happy with me. Never talked to her again. Obviously, but I remember trying to get to practice in time. Mm-hmm. And I get there, and I'm before everybody else, and I didn't sleep one second. And I walk in, I'm like, I don't want Lou to see me. Because he knows if I have my suit on. Oh. Oh, my Andy, come on. Yeah. So I ran in there. I go to our trainer at the time. I go, give me some warm-up stuff. To, to dry, to, I'll p- pack everything in a bag. And so when I walk out of here, I don't have hey, my suit. Richie? No, it was a different guy at the time. He got fired. Stealing money. Anyway. Oh. I, yeah, well. It, and what's the story with that? He stole money from the fine fund. He got canned. Like, where's that money? Is it? It's not like it's not like sitting in That's a right. basket. Yeah, it is. Is it? Mm-hmm. Like church, like how they pass the, yep. the uh, basket around. I wouldn't know. <laughs> but yeah, you said you did earlier in the in the intro. I didn't. I you they go to church. You're praying and stuff and all that. I yeah. pray on the bench. Oh. I didn't mean I'm in church. I pray to <laughs> Lord Jesus in my family, <laughs> my dogs and stuff, and I felt good about it. And not, not to that I was. Je- I, I don't know what the fuck I was talking yeah. about, but it worked. The dogs. But anyway, he did that. But I get, he gave me an outfit to wear to leave. And everybody's like, what the oh, fuck? Oh, to leave after practice? To yeah, so I didn't have to put my suit back on. You can't on. take that stuff home. I, I took, like, devil's gear. Mm-hmm. That, like, I wore. Did you just, go home and, like, some, like, yeah, some, like Andy. basketball shorts? I got there so early. I d- got there before Lou, which is Like hard the stuff they give to, like, the uh, yeah. prospect camp. Yeah, you know, like exactly. <laughs> and I wore that home. And I put my, my suit in, like, a plastic bag, and I took yeah. it out. But I got there for everybody. I never... Ever motherfucking mispractice. Well, Rupert ran Not 35 blocks. Close. He ran 35 blocks. Oh, well. And I was, he was like hanging sweating. out. sweating. It, it was hot out. It was, I was in a weird spot. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't in be my doing mind, that. Well, I did it. You shouldn't be doing that. I partied harder than anybody in the league. Did you? Yeah. You think so? I think I partied. Is that like a badge of honor for you? Or you, I'm like, alive. you look back on it. I look back like you, I could. Do you wish you would have done it differently? Yeah, of course I wish I would have done it differently. So if you had to go start over right now, yeah. what are you doing differently? I'm not getting on the painkillers. Okay. It's been half a, half a million. What else things. are you not doing? Oh, a lot of things. Okay. Man. <laughs> a, lot, it's, a lot of things. A lot of things, but. Um, well, look where you are today. I'm okay. Yes. I'm okay now. I still got my issues. You got that local got legend hat on. I still got my demons. Kate oh, you got the uh, normal brand uh, uh, vest on. I got to give them a shout out, too. Give them a shout out, then. Yeah, and because like, they ship anywhere. Yeah. You guys want some cool ass clothes? Check out Normal Brand. Bad ass shit right yeah. there. They're always want Normal Brand. Some family. They just opened Lord. up a new location in uh, Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. And like all the boys are going in there. <laughs> They're all going in there getting stuff. They're opening hey. up. Hey. All y'all, Andy and I will come down to Nashville. Yeah, we'll hang out with y'all. We should do a, a event from the normal brand in Nashville. Let them know. Oh, dude, they'd love that. They're God, ha- they're dang. opening a new event in uh, Kansas City too. Yeah, I'll go to Kansas. I don't know if we have time with our golf schedule. Listen, no, we're starting on Tuesday. Can we get on the on the course on Monday? I'll let you know when I'm going to invite you. No, 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 way no, 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 no. I'll be there, dude. You, uh, you like, I, I'm inviting hard. You're not court. golfing with anybody else. The way you're it's golfing and the report that I got back about the balls that you Listen, use. I'm cool enough to where I can be old shitty. How are those balls? Yeah. I, no, the, it's not. I'm cool enough to be shitty and be doesn't cool. Doesn't work that way. You're not cool enough to be shitty. Doesn't work that way. You're not cool and shitty. <laughs> and that's a bad combo. Who do you like, Blues or Wild? Give it to me. I don't know, homie. Oh, God. Have a take, dude. I think the Wild are going to win. You do. Yep, it's six. Army listens to every episode. I know he does. Well, talk to him because they don't talk to me right now. I'm, talk to Army. I'm talking to the people. He, he's listening. I'm talking to the people in fucking Canada. I'm talking to people in fucking Maine. I'm talking to people in fucking overseas, the military folk that listen to us. You don't. You know nothing about I those know. people. You know what? nothing about those about people. what people? Military people. You know. Nothing I know more about, about the military people than I know about what I'm going to predict on this goddamn series. <laughs> Tell you that right now. I know the fucking. Do military not speak folk. to my people. Andy, your people are fucking nerd boys from India that have a fucking IQ of Who? whatever the fuck. My neighbors? That do nothing in life, and they sit there and eat curry all fucking day. And <laughs> Is I, that? I don't know who you can say that. Why? He has a new uh, uh, gardening tool that Good he was for him. using. That, like, spins he's got a mask on when he's doing it? No. There's other people that walk around in your neighborhood. Your yes. nerdy fucking na- <laughs> No shit. They're very, very smart. Nerdy-ass neighborhood you live in. Very smart. My neighborhood's so cool, man. Everybody's fucking cool as shit. They're all successful. They all get it. Somebody sent they me. Don't a bitch. Buddy they don't wear mine, masks when a they're buddy walking around. Somebody sent me a, a house that we, that uh, his his client just bought in your neighborhood. A badass house. Yeah. 
You played golf with my buddy Kylie Hill, by the way. Yeah, he's yeah. cool as shit. Yeah, I told you. Cool as shit. Yeah. Not that good at golf either. Okay. Was he chirping me? He told me he was. Was he chirping me? No, he told me he was terrible. He wasn't that good. But I played with him before where he's okay. I like him a lot. Yeah. He played like Kylie, not Kyle. He should be named Kyle. <laughs> Why is his name Kylie? That's a broad's mean, name. Is it? Yes. You think Kylie? It? That's a broad's name. Why well, I go why, he's such a big, tough looking motherfucker. Yeah. I go, why wouldn't they just name you Kyle? And what do he say? I don't remember. You can't be chirping people's names. Your name's Why? Cam. Cam's a shit kicker. Well, name. it's like Cameron's the real name. Cam Jansen? That's not a fucking hockey name to you? It's Get a off. female children's book character. That's true. Okay. Oh, fuck. A, I mean, a, let's redhead. Be honest, a redheaded female ch- oh. children's book character. Anybody no, look wait. that up. Never mind. You're right. Yeah. I have a bitch name. You have a bitch name. What the fuck? I just I had to, like, I had to, I got to let you know everything. You know what? I didn't like my name when I was young mm-hmm. until I became a and shit And now kicker. you don't like it again. No. Now I'm like, you're a fucking badass. Cause no. My but name's it's not synonymous the case. with it's shit not kicker. The case, what are you though? talking about? Because it's a. Cam's a shit kicking name because I created it. But before I created it to be a shit it's kicker, a it was a children's book name. character, a little girl with red hair. Red hair, and she's kind of a nerd. Yeah, well, she's <laughs> not even hot. And it's you know, well, they wrote it after you, so she's kind of ugly. <laughs> Perfect. I know. <laughs> and she's got red fuck hair. What's wrong? With, nothing wrong with that. Eh, no one's successful. Okay, with red why hair. are you chirping people with red hair? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think if you red got ha- red hair, you're kind of like denounced. In no, a way. that's not true at all. Yeah, it is. Redheaded people are very successful. I don't know about that. In fact, I think there's a redheaded uh, individual on my street in my in my neighborhood. Very yeah, successful. I'm sure he's fucking. Fu- he's a. He's such a party. <laughs> Your neighborhood's such a, party. such a party. Holy fuck! You get the worst neighborhood in the world. Fucking cooking curry all goddamn day. <laughs> Wearing masks, walking outside, like what? They're what a blast that must be. It's very diverse. Yeah, so fun. It's a lot of different types of people in there. Yeah, cool and people. food trucks come every Real Friday cool people too. too. Like lots of food trucks come. I'm gonna have you guys over. Actually, we are yeah, having we'll you over. Yeah, we'll come. <laughs> We're gonna make that happen. All right, yeah. listen. I'll be excited. You're picking that. the wild. Kind of man. Okay, and you got Colorado. Yeah, no, no, I don't. You don't. You're taking Dallas. I'm, yeah. Oh, dude. Okay. Are you really? And I'm taking the Kings. Dude. So go fuck yourself. And I'm taking Washington. Write it all down. Write it down. Write it down. Type it down. Washington. Washington. Write it all down. Cam likes to say things so that are so ridiculous. So if it Why happens, ridiculous? then he can be like, oh, I said uh, that. Well, no I'm shit. the only one that said it. No Shit. So, okay, now give me your real, like, what you really think is going to happen. I, I think Pittsburgh's going to win. No, you don't. Yes, I do. They're goalie. Why are you, ex- why are you arguing with me? How can you argue with me? Because you're trying to, like. The goalie said you yeah, don't know. Dude, you're but trying you to be You said the same thing in like, 2019 with the fucking Bennington. What's the difference? You don't know shit. You're trying to be. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. All you out there that act like you know shit. All you, you don't know shit. So go fuck yourself. Okay. Pittsburgh's gonna win. You're trying to be like, um, you know that who who oh, hot take guy. Well, oh, I right. have hot. Listen, I'm gonna say something that nobody else is saying. You asked me a goddamn question and I answered it. Who's gonna win the Hart Trophy? I don't know. <laughs> hey, you know who's gonna have a hell of a series though? Mark my words, Mitchie Marner. Okay, They're Mitchie get spanked. Mitchie, Mitchie Marnie. Mitchie Marnie is going to be Mitchie Marnie and not Mitchie Marner. He's going to get spanked around by Patty and all. I'm the getting boys. my son little. I'm getting little Ty a, a Mitchie Marner. Uh, good. He won't be successful in the playoffs. It's good for you. <laughs> make eleven and a half sheets. That's fine. What would you rather your son do? Make eleven and a half million or make seven fifty and win a cup? Make eleven and a half million. Okay, and that's Mitchie Marnie, right there. You know what? I don't know. Whatever he's happy. If I had a son, I just want to be happy. Well, you're going to have one. I, 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 I've been I, dumping if, loads if in Kate like are, you can't I, believe. Apparently, you're not. Dumping loads in her. Apparently, you're not. I'm pathetic. I told you. With all the drug abuse and all that mm-hmm. shit, I think I can't create Well, I'm going to bring somebody scene. on here to who's going to talk to us about that and figure, I'm, figure help you. Is it a you. female? No, she's going to help you figure out how to do this. About what? Because I think... Change have, my sperm? Well, I think How the hell do I do I that? I think if you had a kid, dude, it would just change your life, dude. You think I'm not trying to have a kid? 
No, you, you think I'm like, you oh, hate, oh, God, we're we're having sex. Kid, I have to use a you condom. Ha- you hate kids. I don't know how to use you a condom. You hate kids. I kind of do. So. Well, I hate other people's kids. But my little precious little child. <laughs> no, you're going to have a girl. Hopefully oh, twins. I know. It'll be a girl. No, and she'll be a fucking shit kicking Hopefully twin song. girls. She'll be chewing tobacco. Well, Lucy. Running around fucking St. Louis. She'll, like, be chewing, right she'll be chewing Lucy. I'm like, what are you doing tonight? She's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I hope you have twins. Suck. I hope you have. You know, sometimes when people reach out for help when they can't get pregnant, that's that's when sometimes Man, they, I'm have, spend a 40 they grand have multiples. I'm not spending forty. Like they'll grand have three or four at a time. You Man, know? I'm low. I'm low. Hey, look, could you imagine if Cam had twins? Like he he would not. He would go absolutely <laughs> insane, dude. Oh, you'd have to sell a lot more. <laughs> 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 Cam would actually start selling. He'd be like, I, I, I'd cold call people. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, I'm like, what are you doing? Such He's against like, my rules. I'm just messaging people, asking them to I sponsor know. us. It's such against my, like, <laughs> rule book. And I just, oh, uh, my God. I know, I know. But I think I'm going to have I a little girl. I need you to have greater worth at work ethic on here, okay? Well, are you kidding me? <laughs> I bring the heat every fucking day. And I say crazy things. And it is what it is. And sometimes Brody has to edit it out. And that's fine. L.A. Edmonton. L.A. is going to win. I've already said that, too. Are Although, you? they don't have Dowdy and they, you know. Goaltending. Uh, Mike Smith. Is, you think he's going to stay hot? No. Please, people. I've no. seen that act before. Nope. L.A.'s going to win. He looks kind of crazy, doesn't he? Something he about him bothers me. I don't know what it is. Goalies that are loud that aren't very good, I don't like. Mm-hmm. Get he, my drift? Is he loud? Well, he just kind of like, he he's like, just not that good. He, he, yeah, you know, he like, attacks people after the whistle and stuff and goes... He, you know, he goes. Yeah, little, I know. That's why I chirp Benner crazy. for that. Like, if you're playing hot, you could do that. But oh. if you're not, then go fuck yourself. You, know? you haven't seen Benner do that recently. No, I have not. Can I throw something out there? Sure. You want to know what Jordan Bennington's record is in his last nine playoff games? Zero and nine? Yeah. No shit. I threw that out there. That's a great last one. Night. Good one. Oh, Keep oh, that in. Oh, Don't oh, have him edit that one out. Did you hear me say that last? No one heard you say night? that, Andy. It's obvious. You stayed up and watched that because no, you, I didn't. you were like. I got about 8.30. No. You were tweeting at like nine something. You think I'm gonna stay up for this game tonight? By the way, oh, you'll stay up tonight. You'll stay. I up might tonight. need a little help. <laughs> what are you gonna do to help you? Adderall, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is that illegal? No, it's not. Jesus, Andy, God, are you out of the fucking loop with everything? What does Adderall do for you? Get you up, dude. It's a just I, maybe you, explain. I, it. You don't need to do all that. Tonight. I don't do it all the time. I don't even have a prescription I, you, for you, it. Stay away from the Adderall. No, but sometimes I need it. Oh, prescription. See, it's it is illegal. Jesus, when you go to the pharmacia down in goddamn Cabo. <laughs> you brought that back on the PJ? Yeah, a couple of them. Political ploy. Eh, she didn't want to stand for the national anthem. Mm, oh, I'm you joking. think? No, no, no it's no, all good. No, they're trying here because they just freed that other guy. I know. Who was like. The writer or whatever. He was a journalist. And he, you know what he said? I'd rather spend 10 years behind bars telling the truth yeah, than to lie and get out. And I'm sure your wife loves that, too. You're such a hero. Now, how about you get the fuck out of there? But that? if you know the real story, the U.S. had to give Russia back a Russian who was in the federal funny, penitentiary. It's funny how that works, eh? So you make like a trade. It's like Army calling like, you know, Lou Lamarillo. Being You're just like, now understanding this? Like, I got a D-man. Are you just now understanding if this? If you have like a, a third line right winger, I'll give you like a yeah, depth D-man. Is. That poor chick, though, like she fucked up. and uh, She's like first line. She'd be like a power play. Like, it's not an easy w- trade to pull WNBA off. is fucking awesome. Well, it will be now when she gets back it's in It's the there. worst product going. Her first game back would be the highest rated game ever. And yeah, I will okay. watch that. Yeah, 300 people will watch it. You, you would watch that, nerd boy. Yeah, WNBA is a bad you product. You ever seen her use her left hand? Listen, and women's she, basketball dude, is the like worst fucking thing going. Cam, she dunks, too. No, she doesn't. Yeah, she does. Okay. Like, throws it down. Sick, tough. Yeah, so Throws badass. it down. Those alley-oops are so sick in WNBA. <laughs> Such a, it's a bad product. Half court alley. Everybody's like, "Oh, the NWNBA would be awesome in St. Louis." Um, no one would give a mother. But listen, fuck. I'm thinking about Brittany. I want her to know in case she's listening to this. If she, they give her the option to like listen from from because yeah. da- the bed that she's I on. I feel bad for her. me too, dude. I for do. having a uh, a weed pen. Yeah, it's multiple, but yeah, you don't know how many. Okay, they'll lie about that. You don't. Know, you can't trust anything. Well, you're in Russia and in and in in commercial. How come flight? every Russian I know is like so 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 nice don't and smoke. great? Oh, I was going to say, they don't smoke weed. They don't do that? No, they don't. People in Britain don't smoke weed. They don't. Canadians, Americans. Oh, a buddy of mine, it. I'll give him a shout out right now. He's in the playoffs. He plays for Belfast and sent me a message. His, David Goodwin and his dad and his brother, Who Paul. Who the fuck is that? They said they sent me a message. 
great dude from St. Louis kid. Okay. Playing professional hockey over in England. Okay. His dad and his brother sent me a text. He said, hey, tell Cam we're in Nottingham. Oh, I'm watching the playoffs. Okay, I shouldn't yeah. have said that. I didn't yeah. mean to be like that. No, no sorry about that. They love the pod, dude. No, awesome. Great people. David Goodwin, yeah. do I know him? Uh, he skated with the alumni a couple times. Yeah, but played do at, I know him? Played at Penn State. Okay. Played over in Finland. Sorry, for a Dave, years. dude. I didn't mean to be like that. That's gutless. I usually just chirp Andy because I chirp Andy, but fucking right. Enjoy yourself over there. Go check out the castles. You're in Belfast, dude. Beautiful. They're in Nottingham for the playoff series. Yeah, and do cruise around. Go to that look. And go to Paul that ch- and uh, tell me, give, give him my number. Tell me, give him my give him. Okay. Yeah, on yeah. my WhatsApp. I don't think they want it now after the I way know. you just talked. I didn't mean to be like that. I'm sorry about that. That is not cool. I didn't whatsoever. know. I didn't know. I thought you were like trying to like one up. Yeah, and say I, like, didn't, I didn't like how you I'm sorry. said that. No, yeah. I didn't mean like I, that. I mean, God damn it. <laughs> Tell him to give my WhatsApp number and I'll show him where to go and I'll have my buddy Clarky take care of him. Oh, so really? Yes. Okay. I'll have my boys take care of him there. 100%. So Mr. Goodwin and Paul. Yes. Can I'll have yes. them take care of yeah, that? Yes, yes. Give him my number. Okay. I didn't mean to be like that. I chirp Andy. He, I play, I he, he played at DeSmet, played AAA yeah. Blues all growing I up. I got. I know who he is now. His brother Sammy I know skates with the alumni now. I know who he is now. I fucked Sam's that up. Sam's there too. Andy, I just told you. I fucked that up. Well, I'm say, sorry. Say hello to the... I love you guys. I'm sorry about that, dude. That was gutless on my part. Like, I'm cool. You, I, I'm a fucking you, joke. And the, you know what their, dad, I'm a joke. their dad's name is? No. Tag. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Dude, you, why are you saying that about the good ones? Well, no, it's, kind of, it's a fucking embarrassing name, dude. Look, I'll pump you up and I'll I'll give you. Okay, like, I gave I, you I'm a chance saying. to take it back before you chirped no, him, and then now you're. No, I can't. No, that's ta- a bad dude, name. Dude, tags the best. Tag, yeah. Tag. He just bought a G wagon too. I don't give like, a shit. In his older age, he's Look, like he's the I, man. He's the pimp. That, that's cute. I know he's done some heroic stuff. Oh yeah, I, with his family. Yeah. Now I now I'm putting it all together. Yeah. Because you throw names at me like yeah. I'm a fucking yeah. have a good memory. And he raised great hockey players. He raised dude. good hockey players. And you're in you're in England. That's my God. That's my jam over there. I love those people. They are so. They sweet. don't even know who you are. Are you? They have no idea who you are. Mind. They haven't even heard of you. In fact, listen, oh, Tag, God. Sam, David, Paul. If you're listening, don't oh, even mention no. Cam's name. Are you crazy? No. Hundred percent do that, dude. No, I don't want no. them to. I'm afraid. Why? Of, well, just to, you know, dude. I'll. Don't be stupid with that. I might chirp his goddamn name, Tag. It's kind of goofy. But he's a good dude, and he probably helped his kids out in multiple ways. Actually, I know a story. He's a great dude. We're not supposed to talk about. But Tag, you're a good guy. Your name's Goofy. That's fine. That's fine. I love you. Love your family. Enjoy yourself. With it. What's at my ass? And I'll hook you guys up. What's at? What's app my ass? Oh, what's app? Yeah, that's what the what's uh, app me? Well, you got a lot of Europeans and, and like international well, students. Oh, you want to spend that. money and then tag? And, and oh, by the way, care. my backyard is a uh, high school. No one cares. That is a college preparatory, and I had no idea the dorm there had students from all over the oh, world. Yeah. Dude. They're creeping out I've your windows people, right now. I've met kids from all over the world. And yeah, they, uh, they're like, oh hi, <laughs> what's going on over here? Ooh. Very international. So must be awesome. If they you have my WhatsApp right next dude. to a, a high school with a bunch of the fucking teachers are Pappy Le Pew's <laughs> creeping in your fucking over the place. All right, we got to get out of here. Uh, enjoy the playoffs, man. Will you? Man, I will, but I'm going to go to and, bed tonight. And follow us. Brody's going to get us up on that uh, stream yard, and we're going to be putting out some videos. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as always, brought to you by Hair Club, 800-279-7878. Go to our, our landing page, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Of course, Car Shield, 800-857-2481. Use that promo code CAM. Very embarrassing, but it's going to save you 10%. You got to get that protection. Of course, Lucy Goosey, baby. Get all the flavors. Try the gum, the lozenges, and... Um, the, uh, what else, Cam? Pouches. The motherfucking pouches, homeboy. <laughs> God damn. Get all your different flavors and try them today. Lucy.co. Not com. Dot co. Try the different flavors and use our promo code to save bundles and bundles of cash. The BBB. BBB.org. Say hi to Natasha. Hi. Say hi to uh, Chris. Hey, dude. And say hi to everybody out there who is, uh, you know, whose hi. company is reviewed on the BBB. Hi, Natasha. BBB.org, baby. Bellman.com. Say hi to Danny Boy and Kyle what up, and Danny Dale. Boy? Dale. Kyle. Not Kylie. Kyle. <laughs> hey, if you have a used car, though, take it to Bellman. They'll buy Hell it from yeah. you. Above Kelly Blue Book. And get that maintenance check. They brought up a great point about that. And your car gets a lot of wear and tear during the winter. So they brought up a very good point. Yes, they did, Andy. 
All right, we appreciate everybody for uh, supporting us on the uh, Cam and Strick podcast. Follow all of our shit. Follow. I'm, I'm the king of Instagram. Follow Corey me Hall. on Instagram at uh, Real Strick Nasty, and you can follow me on Twitter at Andy Strickland. Yeah. Follow Andy on Twitter more than anything because actually he does good <laughs> stuff on Twitter. But, it's but follow our Cam Although, and Strick. Although I will say yeah. something, what? and it pissed me the fuck oh, off. What? You sent the video of Chloe in a goddamn soccer match. And she gets rocked by some oh, f- psycho yeah. chick. What do you think of that? And she gets put on her ass. She pops back up. Pops right back up. She pops up like, get the fuck on. Oh, yeah. You see how I, you're the only one that noticed I that. go, what? I watch it again. I go, and you have to like press back. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. God damn it. Yeah. And I press back. I go, she got. Right back up. That's how I, I, I raise my and, kids. And dude. Andy's filming her. I could picture Andy steaming coming out of his fucking oh, ears. Steaming. She fucking put her on her ass. And she, Chloe's like, get the fuck In on. In the box, dude. This should have been a PK. Man, that I don't know that that pissed me off a little but, bit because Chloe's such a she's a little badass dude. I'm not gonna lie to you. She's I, got she's got in her. She does. And when I saw her the other day, and you're like, "How many goals you got?" Like you're treating her like a child. And she's no, like, I didn't she's like, no, 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 you that. did, no, no, no. I, like how many goals you get? Chloe's like, get the fuck on, Dad. Like, <laughs> no, I got fifty fucking goals. Can I want you? So I'm talking to a grown up over here. She's talking to me, and like you're trying to like me, 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 me. She's like, no, like she's just cool as shit, dude. She looks nothing like you. Yeah, you know, she looks just nothing like, me. like you. Just like me. And she kind of does look like you. Don't yeah, she? she does. But like a tougher, more pretty version <laughs> of you, if that's possible. <laughs> She's cool, man. She's like she get, popped right back up. She popped up like a badass. You see BH. how I raise my kids, dude? We don't lay on uh, the field. Well. We don't lay on the field. She li- Yeah. No. Did you she, ever lay on the ice? No. Get out of here. No. Hey, did you ever have to have the coach come yeah, out I, one yeah, time? Cam, are you okay? Yeah. When I was choking on my fucking oh, tongue. Yeah, I remember that. I was there for that. I still tried to get up. I don't lay on the ice. Yeah, you I did. Don't lay on. You I was <laughs> knocked out, you idiot. <laughs> Any other time? No. Oh, when you were a kid, you probably did. did all the time. I did one time. Oh God. I was playing two years what did up. Denny had to say oh, about that. Oh my God, he was not happy about that. <laughs> Holy, because I was like telling people to sit down. What about Amy? She wasn't there. But I remember putting guys down, like, bam, bam. And I was playing two years mm-hmm. up, and the guy put me on my ass. And then he's like, yeah. And my dad goes, get the fuck yeah. up. Okay. Get up. Yeah. You going to fucking talk shit? Mm-hmm. And then you get, yeah. Okay. Don't right. you do that pussy shit. Thanks for listening to Mike Rupp. All right. And Love you guys. Us. Episode number 184, baby. Yeah. This is the Cam and Strict Podcast. <laughs>